those are emotes that um, I do a little shuffling of emotes, uh, but basically Twitch has unlocked a follower. They've allowed for follower emotes. So people who follow a channel can get emotes off the channel as well now. Uh, it's still in beta, um, but our, our channel got beta access. So there you go. Um, yeah, well, I'd already forgotten tech support. Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't, I, I'm not sitting at this computer when the stream starts. You know that, right? Like, I'm not sitting here fucking waiting. I'm, I'm rushing around doing last second things. Um, thank you for the sub, Buddhist. Um, three months. Fascists get freedom of speech just like anybody else. Repercussions for fascists for their uh, for their speech, that's another matter. Um, but yeah, they get free you don't you don't get to take away somebody's freedom of speech. That's that's not a thing you do. Yeah. It's it's the reason we don't burn books. You 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 can expel them. You can ostracize them. You can remove them from your community. But the actual removal is the problem. The the, the silencing is the problem. Hey, Chapo. Um, yeah. There's, I mean, effectively it is silencing them, but in a different way that most find philosophically consistent. Is the phrase fascist don't care for freedom of speech? Is it self, is it fascist in itself? Okay, so here's 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 the first thing. Here's the first thing. <coughs> Fascism has come to be abused. The word. The word has come to be abused. People are saying fascist <clears throat> for authoritarian. People are saying fascist for violent. People are saying fascist for alt-right. People are saying fascist for conservative. People are saying fascist for a whole host of things. Fascist is a prescriptive term. My dad grounded me, the fascist. Exactly. Right? Like, if auth ain't fash, fash is off. Yeah. And so, this is where I think we need to start that conversation, Karina, is... It's not fascist because fascist is a checklist. Fascist is a specific style. Fascist is a thing, right? Um, let me clear Leoran board here. There we go. And while I'm at it, why don't I pull this down, pull contents. And let's discuss it at length. For everybody, consult your international encyclopedia of political science. This is pull your reference guide. Um, there is a no, no. The international encyclopedia of political science. We're going, we're going, truly prescriptive on this one. Welcome, Virginia. Um, fascism has become a generic term to represent a political movement that developed between the two world wars, principally in Europe, with a few extensions, notably in Latin America. This term was employed for the first time as a partisan label in Italy in 1919 by Benito Mussolini, who appealed to younger veterans to establish a fasci di combattimento. In Italy, a new type of political organization emerged, developed, and was eventually imposed, one that was more or less indirectly foreshadowed and inspired a set of movements and political regimes, including Adolf Hitler's National Socialism in Germany, Leon Dregel, uh, Degrel's uh, Rexism uh, in Belgium, and Oswald Mosley's Fascist Union in Great Britain, 
Cordelou, uh, Corderons, Iron Guard in Romania, uh, the Arrow Cross Party in Hungary. I'm going to stop saying some of these names because I can't pronounce these names. It's just I'm butchering them. The Arrow Cross Party in Hungary, the Falange in Spain, the Integralist Action in Brazil, and the French Popular Party in France. Within this group, important differences persisted among movements. Some of them remained minority opposition forces while others formed political regimes. Some ruled in coalition while others gave rise in dictatorships based on a single party. There are also important differences in the ideology or social basis of these fascist-inspired movements as these emerged and took shape in very different socioeconomic and cultural contexts. Important variables include the degree to which their setting was industrialized and secular and the extent of nationalization nationalization and um, politicization of the masses. It is nevertheless possible to classify a group of movements and regimes into a category labeled fascism. These share some major typical traits formed in the context of the political laboratory represented in the black shirts in Italy. This entry analyzes fascism throughout its connections with World War I, its ideology, and finally the way in which it's produced a new kind of regime. So we'll skip the history. Let's skip the history and go into the fascist ideology. Okay. For those of you who don't understand the text I'm reading from, because we've covered this text before. This is the International Encyclopedia of uh, Political Science. This is a $1,400 book. I'm not fucking with you. I'm not fucking with you. This is the book. You, for political scientists, this is the equivalent of Black's Law. Okay? All right. If you're going to discuss law, and you're going to discuss it at a high level, and you're going to discuss it in the areas in which they act upon it, not on Twitter, not on Facebook. You need a Black's Law. It's just the way it is. If you're going to discuss political science, you need a copy of the International Encyclopedia of Political Science. It's just the way it is. Now, you and I can sit here and talk about descriptive language sets and how people use it commonly. But if you want to talk actual learned areas of expertise, actual political scientists, actual politicians, actual legislation... You need a copy of this book. This is just the way it goes. Is this book the end all be all? No. Are some people using it differently? Uh, using these terminology, this terminology differently? Yes. But that doesn't change the fact that the, the halls of academia, the halls of legality, the halls of governance on an international level recognize this book as a form of linguistic authority. And so it behooves us as people who are looking in from the outside to understand what they mean when they say these words. These militia, so fascist ideology, these militia parties mobilize their members around a set of values, creeds, and myths that form the common ideological basis of fascism. Yeah, idolize the thighs. No, I mean, that's that's the baseline, like, retail. That's just fucking Amazon. Yeah, borrowing borrowing the book off Amazon using a Kindle library is $400. Do you ever try to buy a Black's Law? Technical documents such as these carry a hefty price tag. You have to know that. Okay. This was primarily, uh, primarily an ideology of action that found an immediate extension in a style and quite singular aesthetic. As in organizational matters, fascisms practiced hybridization in ideological matters. They created a synthesis of influences from the ultra-right, the most radical nationalist and racist standards, and influences from the ultra-left, revolutionary syndicalism inspired by Sorel. France was one of the first laboratories of this new ideological alchemy. The result was a cult of action, violence, and youth, and a revolutionary rupture with the parliamentary system and liberal society. Fascist ideology initially involved hostility to political uh, currents of the Enlightenment. Liberalism and Marxism were its targets of choice. It was based on a radical denunciation of social egalitarianism as well as bourgeois society. Presenting itself as a third force ideology, different from both capitalism and communism. 
On economic and social development, this per third position would find its solution in the corporatist principle of harmonious cooperation between labor and capital for the benefit of the nation. Nationalism, not class consciousness, was the backbone of fascist ideology. This ideology, accordingly, was organized around the myth of the nation conceived as an organic and compact community. Fascism's mission was to purify the nation politically, anthropologically, and even racially with a view to the assertion of its power. Most fascist movements, beginning of course with National Socialism, put racism and anti-Semitism at the center of their doctrine and political plans. Even Italian fascism, which was initially based on a more political conception of the nation, ended in the mid-1930s by putting the issue of race in the foreground and adopting anti-Semitism anti-Semitic legislation in 1938. This homogenous national community was destined to be permanently mobilized for the course of uh, for the uh, goal of conquest. The fascist ideology was guided by an imperialist the uh, theology. Conquest of Lebensraum in the uh, in the case of national socialism and construction of a new world order in the case of Italian fascism. Fascism was not born from war. It was born for war. Its intention was to ideologically mobilize the population with a view to forming a combatant community fit for military conquest. Congratulations. You just heard a political sciences, uh, scientist's technical definition of fascism. And keep in mind, this is not the work of one person. This isn't like one author who authored this book. This is, this is generations of knowledge gone into this, this text at this point. So, that's fascism. Now, how does a fucking Twitter mouth use fascism? Authoritarian. That's what they mean. Generally speaking, when people say fascist now, they mean authoritarian. That's, that's the, the colloquial descriptive version of fascism nowadays. Basically, Karina. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <coughs> so, <clears throat> there you go. Fascism is when vaccine. Yes, exactly. Um, this is this is this is why I largely run a prescriptive space for the community because. When discussing politics, we need a, a shared understanding. When discussing philosophy, we need a shared understanding. When discussing theology or any other technical thing, just as if I were having a conversation with fellow IT community members, we have shared language. If I say TCP IP, they know what I mean. There's no variance in their brain, right? They understand. I'm talking about a transfer c control protocol and an internet protocol. They know what I'm talking about. Politics, anybody can get involved. <clears throat> and that causes a lack of barrier of entry, which can be problematic for the communication of ideas. <laughs> Boss. Um, and that that's an issue. That's an issue. Um, because people start abusing words and now what has a definition doesn't have a definition. And that's when you pull out the International Encyclopedia of Political Science. Sincerely. Like, if you want to have a descriptive discussion about whether fascism should mean authoritarianism, that's fine. You can have that discussion. But for the purposes of if you get a degree in political science... If you enter, uh, you know, a, a, a prescriptive space where they discuss politics and you say fascism, they're going to understand it to mean something specific. <clears throat> so, yeah. And, yeah, like, it, it's, it's just it's one of those things. <sighs> so, anyway, I hope that answers your question. I, I hope that straightens you out, Karina. Like, I hope that gets you somewhere. 
but I think a few of you are here for just for TGen story time. Don't you know when you engage in mutual aid, it's actually vanguardism from Twitter? Hmm. Tankies? That's not, that feels like tankies. Yeah, that, that feels like tankies, weather. I just... Nice, Rattus. Well, we'll be doing the theory. We'll see how my voice holds, but we'll be doing theory. Um, tonight's DST will be short. Tonight's DST will be short. Um, ah, well, Karina. Um, it's called Restart, so it's definitely video game themed. Um, it's always the tanks. Of course it is. Yeah. It, which is hilarious. Weather. Given given the fact that um, they operate a vanguard, right? Mutual aid is vanguardism. You're a vanguard. I, I oh god, I love them. Either way. <sighs> oh zippy, they can't all be an hour and forty minutes long. Got to learn all the buzzwords people are throwing around, you know. Um, Aspen, not great. Um, Caboose, learned men, committees, tiered systems. Just, there's a, there's a long technical explanation, but I can get you there in a fucking single sentence. Yeah, the Vanguard is the, the committee that you have to go through. That's what you're looking at for all intents and purposes. Uh, is the lovely smart boy at the game shop with Karina here? Speak up. Um, nice. Um, all right, then. Caboose. Tankies are fucking dumb, man. They're fucking dumb. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry of mincing words. I'm not, I'm done mincing words at this point. Tangies are dumb to be convinced by this ideology. You, you gotta be a fuck. You gotta be a little touched just a little either way. All right. So Tuesday, Tuesdays are service scheduled 7 p.m. I roll out, uh, well, I roll over to uh, my Dom's house, and um, I walk in, and the f he told me, he told me I can bring my iPad, right, he told me bring my tablet, just in case, I was like, all right, well, maybe he's doing some work, right, maybe he's trying to get some stuff done, fine, I'll, I'll take, I'll take stuff, I'll take stuff, um, so I walk in, typical, typical setup, I suppose, at this point. I walk in, and I see him sitting in his chair. The TV is on. Um, he's, he's just sitting there looking at it. Um, and I walk in, and I sort of see what's laid out for me. I, 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 I you know, set my case down on the couch, and immediately, you know, shirt, um, actually this stuff comes off first, um, which hilariously, like this is the one thing, like I can walk around completely naked without this stuff on my wrist. I feel naked clothes. Doesn't matter to me, but this, this stuff, you have to understand this stuff has been on my wrist for a very long time now, years. Um, so take this off and I, I treat it reverently, rever reverently, right? I, I treat this stuff reverently. Um, when I take it off, it gets circled and placed, right? It's not just a throwing it somewhere. I, I place it. Um, so shirt off, shorts off, and there is a Seafoam green, which is his description of the color, not mine. I would have just gone for teal. 
um, pair of lace panties laid out, and he's got a Gemma, basically. Um, he's got cuffs and a collar, and I put on the panties, um, as was I presumed to be expected. Walked right into it, Gemma. Just starting. It won't be that long, though. It's not a ton of details. Um, so, for those of you who are unfamiliar with DGen story time, we're in just chatting right now, and if you try and derail using politics in chat, people will get very angry at you, and eventually you'll get timed out. Just be aware. This is your warning. Um, so I put on the lace panties and walk over to him and he stands up and he, um, immediately starts putting the collar around my neck and I glance down and I notice there's locks. There's locks. Um, and so I, you know, just sort of but with eyes closed and receive said caller um click all right i wouldn't try and take it off anyway but it adds a little something right at the end of the day i don't know if it will come off right like that is he could fuck with me um it's a possibility um so wrist get it on click get this one on click he sits back down i sit on the ottoman i put my foot up between his legs ankle ankle click click right he says we're just gonna watch a movie tonight he said i i, I picked this movie he said i've been wanting to see this movie for a while and I picked this movie because I think maybe, like he said, basically what I know of you, I think maybe you'll like this one. Right? Okay. What are we watching? Right? Like, so he sits down. He scoots way over in this big chair. It's a big chair. It's a big chair. He scoots way over in this chair. Like, I, I, I know what this is indicating I'm to sit next to him, right? Like, that's, I'm, I'm bound and... To, I'm here for fucking body contact and eye candy, right? Okay. Cool. Um, sit down, he puts his arm around me and starts scrolling, gets to HBO Max, pulls up HBO Max. He's got all of the streaming services, all of them, just all of them, just all of them. Um, He starts scrolling down, and I'm just trying to figure out what he's what he's like through the sections. I'm like, you know, just rolling through. I'm like, what's he gonna what's he want to watch? Right? It's it's what he wants to watch. <sighs> Dune. It's Dune. It was at that time that I told him he he got to Dune. He's like, I think I think you'll like this one. And I was like, I'm not a Herbert fan, sir. He's like, really? I'm like, no, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit about, about Dune. Truly, I don't, sir. He's like, well, that's why I told you to bring your, um, yeah, tech support. That's why I told you to bring your iPad. If you get bored, you can go work. Okay. So we start it. We get maybe. 45 minutes in, you know what? I can fucking tell you, actually. I can tell you how far we got in. Um, no, we got an hour and a half in. Not kidding you. We got an hour and a half in, and he goes, does it sound like the sound is coming from the TV or the sound bar? Let me check. Right. He pauses it and asks. I'm like, well, let me let me check, sir. 
Um, and I get up and get on my hands and knees and like lean in over the ottoman and, you know, he presses play again. And no, it's coming from the TV, sir. He's like, oh, for fuck's sake. I have been on the phone with them. I have been like, I have tried and then it works and then it doesn't work. And then fucking, he's like, that's that. I'm, I'm sick of this. This TV may go back. Job. It's at this point, we start engaging in some technical support. Kai's got, Kai's got to play tech guy. Um, Karina, I hate, I hate doing tech work for anybody, especially in like sub mode. I, I absolutely despise it. I, I, I hate doing it. I will do it happily for my community. I will do it happily for others. But the fact of the matter is, is that like at the end of the day, I don't tech support, right? I skip that level. Yeah, like I don't tech support. I, 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 that's not my gig. My gig was building networks, building out infrastructure, right? Like tech support somebody else's gig. I would contract that to somebody half the time unless it was a, a big issue and the CEO called me. Well, no, not, I did not come to fuck Caboose. I knew, I, uh, I've, I try and point this out to you guys over and over. A majority of what a sub does is not sexual. Like when you actually engage in a dominant submissive relationship of some sort, it's not fucking most of the time. Most of the time, it's general service. It's presence of mind. Like, it's vast majority of it is not fucking. Like, this is, this is, Swede had a dominatrix who literally sent him to cooking classes as part of his submission before. So he would know how to cook for her better. BDSM. All right? Like, this is what y'all need to understand about BDSM. It's not all just fucking. It's by far not even fucking. How much do y'all fuck in your daily lives? How much fucking can you do? Right? There's only so much fucking you can do. So if you're going to do something that is a larger encompassing lifestyle. Uh, yes, Zippy, he did. He told me in chat even. Yeah. Um. I prefer to call it devotion. Hey, call it whatever you want. Um, so, it's, it, it, at the end of the day, like, if you expect fucking from every D-Gen story time, then you're going to be severely disappointed in 95% of the D-Gen story times. From here on out. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Um, so, yeah. Like, I'm doing story time. I'm doing um, tech support. Um, and he basically, I'm allowed up. I'm, I grab my phone to do, and I respond to a couple of messages. And then so the, the, I saw that I had a couple of messages. So there were a couple of few people. There were three people probably that saw, like, I, I responded. Then I was like, yeah, no. Like, you know, want to get a pre, pre-stream pre game in? No. Kai is busy. Um, And so I, I did some quick searching and found somebody mentioned just something that clicked in my brain. I was like, oh, you know what? I could try something like that. Let me see. And I walk over and I ask him, I'm like, can I see the remote control, sir? Da, 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 da. Basically, I changed the Apple TV audio settings down to Adobe 5.1. Right, it was set to auto, and the at the Atmos Adobe Atmos shit was just getting in the way. So I took it down to a standard 5.1 compression scheme, and boom, everything works. We got system sound. We've got fucking center channel. Everything works. 
I'm like, done. Fucking, here he goes, sir. And he takes it back to HBO Max. We fucking hit play. And now we can hear the center channel audio on 5.1. Cool. We're off to the races. Um, sometimes BDSM is 0% sexual. None of the letters mean sex. At least that's what I heard. Bondage, domination, sadism, masoch- masochism. None of the letters stand for sex. Well, that is spot on. Um, so, um, yeah. We're off to the races again. Um, I remember the scene that we were in um, when it finally kicked off. So, he rewards me of sorts. Now, this is, this is, this is, this is. Burger Man, did you do that willingly or did you have to be coerced into it? If you had to be coerced into it, it's not BDSM. If you did it willingly, then that's another matter. Um, He rewards me. Let's just say if I do this, it's sore. Yeah. Um, he went to town on my fucking nipples. Like, went to town on my fucking nipples. Like, <sighs> close, my, close your eyes and just go inward. Just forget it. Forget it and just go inward. Let the body experience the sensations that the body is going to experience. Let the brain do what the brain is going to do. It's meditative in a way. This is, this is, this is, strangely enough, this is a form of Kai's meditation, right? Like this, this is, this is where you separate the body and the brain. This is, this is the, the, um, This is the lauded subspace. This is where you disassociate. Now, sometimes you can do it in a microcosmic scale. If you get good at it, do it enough times. Um, and so you just close, them, close the eyes and just breathe. Let him do what he's going to do. Let him have the fun. And if it hits a line that I can't... Uh, thank you, Frackle. Thank you for the sub, Frackle. Subspace, you say. Here, have a sub. Um, if it breaks the line, if you can't hold the line, right, then I can say something. All I have to do is say yellow, and he will slow right down. Right? He will immediately just pull the reins back in an instant. No big deal. So, just riding, just riding that wave. Let the body do what it's going to do. Separate the mind. Eventually, he gives up. He stops, right? He's not getting, he's looking for that yellow. He's looking for it. He's searching for that line. He's trying to find it. But... Sometimes you can outlast your dom. Sometimes you can outlast the sadist as a masochist. You can do it. You, you can, you can, it's, sometimes it is very much a battle of wills. It is, I get a certain sense of pleasure. I get a certain sense of enjoyment out of this. And there is a, a, a line, a bar, there's a, 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 a glass that you are filling with water. And eventually it will overflow. But how much gets put into the glass, how big the glass is, these are the variables we're talking about here. And he wasn't pouring in a huge amount, and I had a pretty large glass. So he eventually goes back to the movie, right? The movie is playing. It's calling for his attention. Um, so I... You know, I'm 
just there, right? Like, I, my legs are up on the ottoman with his. Um, Buka! Um, thank you for the sub. Uh, true or false, every sub has some bratty tendencies. It's inevitable just in human beings. Um, you try the, the definition of bratty, though, tends to be within BDSM circles as to whether you exhibit them outwardly. Internally, everybody's got the bratty mechanism. It's whether you let it out, whether you put it on display. That's that's usually what determines whether someone is a brat or not. But the bratty tendencies are just human beings. Um, Alan Watts would have called it the uh, irreducible element of human rascality. So that's that's basically like it. it, it there's a, it, there's an innate tendency within human beings to like walk down the street and see a, uh, see somebody have a cup in their hand and you just like there's that weird first instinct you just want to fucking knock it out of their hand for no good reason you don't do it you don't fucking do it but you've got that weird instinct right that's just one example of many it's the irreducible element of human rascality right we're all rascals on some level we are all fucking kids on some level. <clears throat> so, there you go. Um, I'm mostly rascal. Yeah, you are, Kvass. Um So, he goes back to... Um, <laughs> Boy. I get that when I'm frying something. I could throw this pan of searing hot oil at someone and seriously fuck them up. And I'm just like, the fuck is wrong with you, brain? It's in there. It's just in there. It's it's in there. Um, I think modern psychologists call them intrusive thoughts. Either way, we go back to the movie. Um, and partway in, probably two hours to something in... He said, he asked me, are you, are you bored? I said, I'm not bored, sir. I just am not hooked by this story. I said, the, the movie suffers from the same thing as the book, right? Like I, I don't, something about the story of Dune, something about Frank Herbert's writing style, something about the, the setting. I don't know. It just doesn't hook me. It's not my story. I, I'm, I'm, if you want like grand fucking space shit, I'm in the Asimov camp and I know some people are in both and in all and in neither or, but for me, Herbert doesn't click. It just doesn't click. I don't give a shit about spice. I don't give a shit about that stupid fucking worm. I don't give a shit about the emperor. Right? Like it just doesn't work for me. Oh, necrophiliac. <laughs> Um, yes, but I picked somebody over Philip K. Dick. Uh, it was Asimov versus Philip K. Dick, and I picked Asimov over Philip K. Dick. But I like Philip K. Dick's stuff. Don't get me wrong. Um, I mean, Dune did give birth to Warhammer 40K. All right, so that, that alone, just get it off the fucking table. That alone gets it out. Canceled. Um... We were getting near the end of the movie and he started really working them again. Um, and this time he managed, like, he managed to go the distance. He fucking leaned in on him. Like, leaned in on him. And I rode that train for as long as I could ride it. And we literally coincided as he, I could feel it, as the word left the tip of my tongue, he was releasing. I was right there. Right, right fucking there. Like, literally, like, simultaneously, as I was saying the word yellow, he had no more in his fingertips. He just, <sighs> same time. It was, it was just simultaneously. 
and he had a good chuckle. He said, I've been trying to get that yellow out of you. I've been trying to get that yellow out of you, boy, but, you know, he said, glad I finally got it. Like, yeah, you barely got that one. <laughs> you barely got that one. Another half a second, and I would have fucking, I would have, I would have won that round. <laughs> um, it's at that time that the movie started wrapping up, thankfully. Like I said, Herbert's not my thing. And honestly, like, I might feel differently about this movie if all of the movies existed. If I could watch the trilogy or quadrilogy, whatever, whatever. Oh, no, no, I never bellow it, Zippy. It's a grimace for me to say it every fucking time. Every fucking time I have to utter that word. It is it is grimaced through, like, yellow. It's like that. That's that's how that word comes out every fucking time. Um, if the, the the trilogy or quadrilogy or whatever the fuck this Dune series is gonna be, Puka, um, my dom is old guard trained and old guard uses a um a, a stoplight system. Green, more yellow. Slow down there, killer. Red, we're done. Scene over. Get me the fuck out of whatever the fuck we're, I'm strapped to. Get me the fuck. Like, we're done, done. Not like, just stop. Like, we're fucking, it's over. It's going to be two movies for the first book. See, this is, I, I would feel differently about this if I had all of it at once, maybe. 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 Um... When she looks at the fucking camera and goes, it's only the beginning, I rolled my eyes. I'm not, I'm not fucking with you. I rolled my eyes. I, 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 it's like, it's only the beginning. Yeah, I know. You're going to milk this for fucking how many years? How many years is this series going to take to happen? Two movies for the first book, right? So that's like what? How long did it take to make the first one? Amorous, again, I'm an Asimov guy. I'm foundation territory. I don't like Herbert. I don't like fucking Dune. I don't like it. It doesn't hook me. I don't give a shit about Spice. Don't care. Um, So I sat through the fucking movie because my dog wanted to watch the movie. Uh, there's a ratio of page to minute, uh, page to minute return on investment. <laughs> God, that's so cheesy. It is. It is. It's fucking cheesy as shit. She fucking looks at the ca- dead down the barrel of the camera and goes, "It's only the beginning." Oh God. Oh God. Oh, like yeah, this is gonna be some fucking Harry Potter shit, right? And the the, the finale, they're gonna split. They're gonna split into two, right? Whatever last movie it should be, they'll make two movies out of that, right? They're gonna milk it for all it's worth. It took me right out of the movie, and I liked the film. Not necessarily a fan of Herbert. I, I, I dude, I just wanted to keep like, look, I, I fucking, yeah. Again, I don't like Herbert. Like, I don't fucking like his writing style. Look, I've talked about this at length when we talked about the Foundation series that Apple's doing. I don't like fucking Herbert. I don't like Dune. It never hooked me. I've never made it through it. I don't give a shit about it. I don't know what the difference is. I can't piece him a, a, uh, piece it together either. But for whatever reason, this story just does not click in my brain. I don't like it. Um. Yeah, tell me about it, Gemma. Um. The Sci-Fi Channel miniseries did it better. Interesting. Um, for me, Dune operatic. Dune sequels, soap operatic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Burger. There's a shit ton of them. There's a shit ton of them. I mean, all I can... All I can say... Could you have said red on the movie? Um, Peaky, he gave me an out. He said, like, if you get bored, you can just go work. He had me bring my tablet and stuff in case I wanted to do some writing. Yeah. He gave me an out on it. I wasn't going to be released from fucking bondage or service, but I could, I could stop paying attention to the movie if I wanted. Yeah. He gave me an out on that. Um, (laughs) 
Amherst, they don't need to fucking translate shit. They'll just fucking like do a version. Again, you're dude, you're dealing with Hollywood here. This shit makes money. They'll they could be a fucking Dune fucking whatever. Dune toys coming to McDonald's. I don't give a shit. Once it starts making money, job done. So I want the Hodorowski Dune. I, I, I want, I want, I, I still want Hodorowski to do a Dune version. Maybe then it'll be good. That's, do you want to get me involved in Dune? Get fucking Hodorowski to actually do his version of Dune. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't give a shit about it, but we hit the end of it. And it was 1020. Um, it was 1020 and I need to, you know, I stream at 1130, right? Um, so he was like, oh shit, it's already 1020. I wanted to flog you. Um, he's like, damn, I really wanted to beat you a little. Like, oh, well, um, so he tells me I can stand up. Um, and as I stand up, he, um, I agree, Aspen. I agree. Like that would have gotten me into Dune. Um, I, I stand up and he, um, Basically, does a little inspection, looks at me, hauls my uh, hauls my dick out of the the, the panties, um, and fucking like looks at the piercing and wow that that's actually been healing really nicely. Like yeah, no, it's 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 healed, it's healed, like it's it's fine. I can I can grab it and fucking with it. It's it's fine. Uh, but he does a little inspection, looks at things. Checks his handiwork and then laments the fact that we're done for the night. He's like, oh, man, I really wanted to flog you some more. Um, because, I, you know, last session I went two rounds, right? Like, he, 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 uh, yeah. Oh, the one thing I forgot to tell you was the wine service. Um, I did, um, I did have to, hey, Friday kind of guy. Hey, well, say, uh, Curio's good people. I love Curio. Right now we're doing non-politics, but we're just wrapping up. Um. when we were finishing the tech support stuff, um, he already had it decanted for Zeus. I just had to pour and serve. Um, when we were wrapping up the tech support, I, um, he was like wine on the counter, you know? Oh, well, mm. um, so I, I, you know, poured him a glass and brought it and, I have a very specific way I hand things to a dom. I'm always one hand under, one hand bracing, whatever we're talking about. So I'm always presenting, right? It's a very, like, there's, there's, here, take this versus here. There, it's, it's, it's even a more servile method of, like, handing something to someone that I use. Um, so <clears throat> that happened after the uh, tech support period. Well, I stand up and he's, he's doing a little physical inspection and he gives one last just that one I won. That one I wrote out. <clears throat> um, he had a good chuckle at that one. Um, he thought he caught me slipping. I went to the, I went to, I reached back to the waistband of the panties. What I was actually doing is the classic chick move. Every dude's seen this move. Bathing suit, bathing suit, think bikinis, 
think bikinis. You ever you ever see uh, you ever see somebody wearing like a a, a bikini? Usually, usually a, a girl or a woman, right? They they put the fingers in the sides and thoop. yeah, I was doing that, and I quickly did it and then put you know I stand my attention his hands behind the back. Um, and he goes, oh, you caught yourself there. He's like, I didn't tell you to take them off. I'm like, actually, sir, I wasn't catching anything. I and then I showed him exactly what I was do what I did, and he just laughs. He's like, the fact that you even know how to do that, I'm like, mm, you know, it's what it is. Yeah, the butt pick Aspen. Um, he's like, all right, you can take them off, and so I take them off, um, and I um, he's like, okay, so let's, I suppose we can release you now, and. It's a, you know, it's always uncomfortable. I don't, you know, maybe, maybe one of these days you'll see something around my neck. Who knows? Um, and so he hauls the keys out of his pocket. Um, and like I was, I, I it didn't really even dawn on me where the keys were because the locks didn't have a key in them at any time. They were just locks. Um, but yeah, he had the key in his pocket. Uh, the entire time, and he hauls the key out and off the collar. The collar comes off. The wrists come off. Then the ankles come off. And he's like, "Okay, you can get dressed." So I, you know, this stuff goes on first, and then the clothes. And I get dressed, and basically he leans in and like it was. I went in for a hug. He went in for a hug and a kiss. So I had to shift my trajectory like really quickly. Like split second, last second uh, trajectory change. Like when I when I read the body be of the the body language, what was about to happen, I was like, oh shit, I'm fucking up, I'm fucking up, fucking up, right? Like, momentum is carrying you, but you kind of have to, like, quickly shift. It was legitimately like a mid-air, like, dogfight maneuver. It was split second on my part, and I fucking recovered, right? I fucking, you know, like, engage abs, fucking turn head, like, f yeah, fucking stop the, the, the movement. Yeah, basically like, do a barrel roll. Um... And gave him the kiss he wanted, which, by the way, after a dude's been fucking drinking wine, like, oh, God, especially red wine, I, hi, my name's Kai, I'd rather make out with a cigarette smoker than somebody who's been drinking red wine. There, I said it. I think the breath on somebody who's been drinking red wine is by far worse than cigarette smoker breath. I, I'll, I'll fucking die on that hill. I'll fucking die on that hill. It's fucking awful. It's awful. Friday, yeah. Yeah, I'm Kai. Um, chances are you've heard me on Curio's Air. My ex said that about beer specifically. Beer isn't great either. Uh, beer isn't great either. I... I, I the alcohols are rough. The fermented, like, the, like, non-distilled fermented alcohol shit, it's disgusting on somebody's breath. It really is. It's, it's rough. It's rough. So, I do my mid-air barrel roll fucking, you know, 360 kickflip shit, um, and fucking get in there and... Does it not do the... Oh, Jesus Christ. I need to fix that one. I need to fix that one. Mental note, biddies. Um, so, give him the kiss he was looking for, clearly, and the hug, and go on my way, right? He, you know... I get home, and there's, like, eventually... Um, a t there's a text waiting. Like, I went immediately to the kitchen because I needed to get some food going. Um, and... Oh, I, I didn't, wait, I'm seemingly, like, there's memories coming back Friday. I remember you. Yeah, we're doing, like, it's the, the midnight show. It's fucking always a, like, quiet fucking show. We'll get into the politics a little in a bit, but, yeah. 
We're just doing DJ story time. Um, so yeah, I get home and you know, when I get the food prepared, I get back here and I see my phone and there's a text waiting. Like, did I, did I get home? Like you get home safely, like that sort of thing. And yes, sir. Has to be in the kitchen. Need to get food prepared. Number of things to follow. Um, and then we get, I, you know, he basically releases me for the night. It's like, okay, you know, thank you, sir. And that's basically it. That was, that was Tuesday. Like I said, um, not, nothing astounding, nothing revolutionary, but pretty much a day in the life of a sub, right? If I were a live-in sub, there'd be... I'd just be naked all day. I'd be in those collars. I'd be in the fucking, you know, I'd be in the collar. I'd be in the wrist set and ankle set. And like, I'd, I'd be in the office with him when he's working and we'd work together and I'd make the meals and like serve him. And, you know, yeah, like that's, you know, chance there'd be a blow job somewhere in there, but you know, yeah, that's, that's the day in the life of a sub folks. Um, not bruised, but they're going to be sore tomorrow. They're going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. Left one specifically, it's going to be more sore. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's go back over to politics now. Now that we're not doing that. Like I said, it's just going to be a quick one. He wasn't puppeting me. He didn't have an arm up me. Uh, yeah, basically. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't punishment. It was just generalized sadism. Um, no, Zippy, no, no, that, that's, that's, that's the fantasy, that's porn level fantasy. That's very few. Um, very few. No, you're required to have a job, right? There's very few. This isn't Fifty Shades of Grey, right? There ain't a bill. There's not many billionaire and millionaire fucking like masters out there looking for a live-in sub or slave that are like, I will pay for all of that you need. No, bitch, get a fucking job. <laughs> right like that's yeah like that's that's how that shit rolls um he he's actually we've had conversations um oh nice aspen um choose yeah like that sh that shit's fantasy He's had like dudes like like oh lock me in your basement and fucking keep me twenty four seven and he even told me he's like what the fuck do they think I'm gonna do pay for all of their shit? He's like fuck that. <laughs> um, no. It's very it's 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 stuff of fantasy. It very rarely has uh fucking happens. Um, uh, so. If you're looking for it, you're not going to find it. Just know that. Um, uh, Will Alexander, my French glitch, uh, glitch hard, um, is presenting at a conference tomorrow, a conference for key info spreaders. Everyone at the conference will be conveying vital information. Glitchard's uh, uh, talk is titled Key and Vital Information for Living, Developing, and Electrifying Personality and uh, Dying in the Early 21st Century, packed with key info and vital information. Do you wish him the best of luck, too? <laughs> oh, God. How much can a basement dweller really run up? Friday. A fair amount still in the end. Also, toys are expensive. Like leather and fetish gear there's the fetish tax just like the pink tax not kidding you uh le a leather collar you can buy at like pet smart for like 15 to 25 dollars for your animal like maybe even 10 bucks right legitimately buy it on a kink website it'll cost you 75 to 125 there's a kink tax just like a pink tax it's a real thing um 
I mean, numbers, I, I, they'd fucking disappear. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't touch that fucking relationship with a 10 fucking 10 foot pole, let alone anything. Um, either way. So, um, minimize that. All right. I mean, why do you think I keep drawing furry shit? I wouldn't make it as a normal illustrator. A normal illustrator. Yeah. Uh, that was... Did you, man, did you intentionally misspell that that badly, Karina? Or did the autocorrect just look at that and go... I got nothing for you. Um, many people do, Chew Toy. Many people do. Uh, what? Uh, writing is my fort. Uh, ah, okay, Karina. Um, I, Friday, I, look, I, I, I'm not, who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? All I know is, um, I've got a dom that's willing to work around my neuropathy, work around my, um, my health issues, who finds my version of service and submission appealing and I can please him and pleasure him in the ways that do scratch that itch for me as far as whether society admits it or accepts it or whatever and whether it's because it you can profit from it or not I, you know not in the mood to speculate tonight even like fuck him um that wouldn't surprise me though capitalist society and all that um No, and just get him to stop drinking red wine. Ah, <sighs> uh, all right. I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah, we did that one last night. All right. I'm gonna keep working through this fucking anti-ancap theory. I'm gonna keep working through this anti-ancap theory. Oh. <sighs> Good job, Karina. Good job. Um, of course, you get very high fairly regularly, so so much of a treat that is. We'll see. Um, yeah, I don't like that, whatever that is. Oh. All right. But good job. Uh, um, okay, so 4.3 has got like maybe two pages to it. But 4.4, 4.5 go pretty quickly. If the voice holds. Um... Yeah, except it doesn't work that way in real life, Amorous. Imagine if the Flat Earthers were allowed to run a school. Because there's no formalized teaching methodology to teaching anarchism. So you encountered in the wild. You encountered in spaces with other people. Imagine if the, uh, the Flat Earthers were allowed to run a school. And then it's just a random luck as to whether the child ends up in the school that has flat earthers running it. This is people encountering spaces in which ANCAPs exist. And they don't know about anarchism. Nobody taught them about anarchism. There's no fucking college class that's going to teach you these points. Not just school, but geology. Yeah, right? Anarchists have to be on the, uh, have to be on the offensive on this one. 
Thank you, Ka uh, thank you, Kaz. Anarchists have to be on the offensive on this one. They have to. This is how the left loses to the right all the fuck time, is that very same methodology. It's like, ah, engaging with them is losing. No, it isn't. It really isn't. Because if you don't engage, you will lose. And we have lost enough ground. I'm not going to fucking be the one at the helm when, you know, 120 years worth of anarchistic progress is lost because of Rothbardian bullshit. Like, you have to be on the offensive about this stuff. The right-wing libertarian materials in southern schools. I've seen teaching material from Florida. Yeah, I've seen some of the Texas stuff. It's rough. It's rough. Thank you, Kazzy. Uh, Friday. I fuck about now. Um, either way. All right. Oh, I have to do... Oh, God. There's so much fucking, like... There's so many steps to just fucking... There. All right. Um... I wish there was just an overall disable for this. Um, okay, nobody can do that one. I need to remember to do the bits. And raids. Okay. And then I'm just going to turn the alert off entirely. Uh, no, they're influenced mostly by the Texas School Board of uh, Educa uh, Board of Education, Axel. If you want to look into it in the United States, Texas dictates basically how our school books are written. It's a terrifying thing. <sighs> Chapter 4, Section 3. How does private property affect individualism? Private property is usually associated by so-called anarcho-capitalism -capital, uh, with individualism. Usually private property is seen as the key way of ensuring individualism and individual freedom, and that private property is the expression of individualism. Therefore, it's useful to indicate how private property can have a serious impact on individualism. Usually right libertarians contrast the joys of individualism with the evils of collectivism, in which the individual is submerged into the group or collective and is made to work for the benefit of the group. See Ayn Rand's book or books or essays on the evils of collectivism. But what is ironic is that right libertarian ideology creates a view of industry which would, perhaps, shame even the most diehard fam fan of Stalin. Well, what do you mean by that? Simply that right libertarians stress the abilities of the people at the top of the company, the owner, the entrepreneur, and tend to ignore the very real subordination of those lower down the hierarchy. See, again, any Ayn Rand book on the worship of business leaders. In the Austrian School of Economics, for example, the entrepreneur is considered the driving force of the market process and tends to abstract away from the organizations they govern. This approach is usually followed by right libertarians. Often you get the impression that the accomplishments of a firm are the personal triumphs of the capitalists, as though their subordinates are merely tools, not unlike the machines on which they labor. We should, of course, interpret this to mean that right libertarians uh, – um, we should not, of course, interpret this to mean that right libertarians believe that entrepreneurs run their companies single-handedly, although admittedly you do get that impression sometimes. But these abstractions help hide the fact that the economy is overwhelmingly interdependent and organized hierarchically within industry. Even in their primary role as organizers, entrepreneurs depend on the group. A company president can only issue general guidelines to their manager, who must inevitably organize and direct much of their department on their own. 
The larger a company gets, the less personal and direct control an entrepreneur has over it. They have to delegate out an increasing share of authority and responsibility and is more dependent than ever on others to help them run things, investigate conditions, inform policy, and make recommendations. Moreover, the authority structures are from the top down. Indeed, the firm is essentially a command economy with all members part of a collective working on a common plan to achieve a common goal. A, it is essentially collectivist in nature, which means it's not too unsurprising that Lenin argued that state socialism could be considered as one big firm or office and why the system he built on that model was, well, so horrific. So the firm, the key component of the capitalist economy, is marked by a distinct lack of individualism, a lack usually ignored by right libertarians or at best considered as unavoidable. As these firms are hierarchical structures and workers are paid to obey, it does make some sense in a capitalist environment to assume that the entrepreneur is the main actor. But as an individualistic model of activity, it fails totally. Perhaps it would not be unfair to say that capitalist individualism celebrates the entrepreneur because this reflects a hierarchical system in which for the one to flourish, the many must obey. See... Chapter 1, Section 1 on this. Capitalist individualism does not recognize the power structures that exist within capitalism and how they affect individuals. In Brian Morris's words, what they fail, quote, to recognize is that most productive relations under capitalism allow little scope for creativity and self-expression on the part of workers. That such relations, uh, relationships are not equitable, nor are they freely engaged in for the mutual benefit of both parties, for workers have no control over the production process or over the product of their labor. Rand, like other right libertarians, misleadingly equates trade, artistic production, and wage slavery. But wage slavery is quite different from the trade principle, as it's a form of exploitation. See Ecology and Anarchism, page 190. He notes that, quote, so-called trade relations involving human labor are contrary to the egoist values Rand and other capitalist individualist espouses. They involve little in the way of independence, freedom, integrity, or justice. See page 191 for that quotation. Moreover, capitalist individualism actually supports authority and hierarchy. As Joshua Chen and Joel Rogers points out, quote, the achievement of short-run material satisfaction often makes it irrational from an individualist perspective to engage in more radical struggle since that struggle is by definition against those institutions which provide one's current gain. In other words, to rise up the company structure to better oneself or even get a good reference, you cannot be a pain in the side of management. Obedient workers do well. Rebellious workers do not. Thus, the hierarchical structures that help develop an individualist perspective, which actually in reinforces those authority structures. This is uh, Cohn and Rogers notes, means that the structures in which workers find themselves yields less than optimal social results from their isolated but economically rational decisions. Steve Biko, a black activist murdered by the South African police in the 1970s, argued that the most potent weapon of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And this is something capitalists have long recognized. Their investment in public relations and education programs for their employees shows this clearly, as does the hierarchical nature of the firm. By having a ladder to climb, the firm rewards obedience and penalizes rebellion. This aims at creating a mindset which views hierarchy as good and so helps produce more servile people. This is why anarchists would agree with Alfie Cohn when he argues that the individualist worldview is a profoundly conservative doctrine. It inherently stifles change. So what is the best way for a boss to maintain their power? create a hierarchical workplace and encourage capitalist individualism as capitalist individualism actually works against attempts to increase freedom from hierarchy. Needless to say, such a technique cannot work forever. Hierarchy uh, also encourages revolt, but such divide and conquer tactics can be very effective for a time. And as anarchist author Michael Moorcock put it, 
rugged individualism also goes hand in hand with a strong faith in paternalism, albeit a tolerant and somewhat distant paternalism. And many otherwise sharp-witted libertarians, uh, libertarians seem to see nothing in the morality of a John Wayne Western to conflict with their views. Heinlein's paternalism is at the heart of is at the heart the same as Wayne's. To be an anarchist surely is to reject authority, but to accept, self, uh, to accept self-discipline and community responsibility. To be a rugged individualist a la Heinlein and others is to be forever a child who must obey, charm, and cajole to be tolerated by some benign, omniscient father. Rooster Cogburn shuffling his feet in front of a judge he respects for his office, but not necessarily himself in true grit. One last thing. Don't be fooled into thinking that individualism or concern about individuality, not, uh, uh, not quite the same thing, is restricted to the right. They're not. For example, the individualist theory of society might be advanced in a capitalist or an anti-capitalist form. The theory is developed by critics of capitalism such as Hodgkins and the anarchist Tucker saw ownership of capital by a few as an obstacle to genuine individualism. And the individualist ideal was realizable only through the free association of laborers, Hodgkins in that case, or independent proprietorship, Tucker in that. The reason why social anarchists oppose capitalism is that it creates false individualism. An abstract one which crushes the individuality of the many and justifies and supports hierarchical and authoritarian social relations. In Kropotkin's words, what has been called individualism up until now has only been a foolish egoism which belittles the individual. It did not lead to what it established as a goal. That is complete, broad, and most perfectly attainable development of individuality. The new individualism des desired by Kropotkin will not consist in the oppression of one's neighbor, as this reduced the individualist to the level of an animal. I'm just going to assume it stopped recording. I pushed the button, but we'll see if it fucking lags or what, how that clip's going to go. Uh, Mick Echoes has been struggling recently. There we go. Fucking no response. Just the fucking, oh, the clip is requested. Uh, and yes, I couldn't resist fucking more cock. That was just, that was a little too much. Fucking the guy's name is literally M-O-O-R-C-O-C-K. M O O R C O. Yeah. So, like, what's a dude going to do, right? Uh, my dad still believes the right are about freedom and the left are about equality bullshit. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting conversation to have with your dad. Oh, and Mitre, thank you for the raid. You're probably not here anymore, Mitre. Because usually when you finish a stream, you got to go. But if you are, thank you for the raid. But in the middle of a, re a recording and reading, reading and recording, I don't acknowledge anything and I've got alerts turned off. So thank you for the raid though, Mitra. Um, Oh, you're here. Cool. Um, Yeah, that'd be an, uh, um, then thank you. Um, Yeah, that's an interesting conversation to have with your dad about equity versus equality. Um. Definitely worth doing. Whether he'll be open to it, who knows. Two more sections and chapter four is done. Um, I wish I could take credit for it, Mitra. It's just a document that needs narrating. Um, but I did write a new essay recently. Well, the fucking rework of a new essay. Of an old essay. I should say, recently. Got that done over the weekend. But it, it, it just fucking, it's, it's anti-ANCAP. It's what this document is about. It's, it's, it's many, many chapters uh, explaining why ANCAPs aren't anarchists. And I'm, I'm fucking sick of the fucking ANCAPs. 
So somebody needs to like read this document so people can listen to it because people know nobody wants to read. Right, Mitre? No, sorry. Sorry, Mitre. I know this like this cuts deep for you, Mitre, doesn't it? <laughs> this cuts deep. Nobody wants to fucking read anymore, man. Like there's, it just, I mean, yeah, sure. Exceptions, blah, 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 blah. But if it's not in like audiobook form or less, man, it's difficult, right? Like that's shit's difficult. Um, right wingers all seem to suffer from the delusional belief that all people already start from the same places. They don't see equity being an issue. Oh God. Um, Nice. Nice, Mitre. Fuck yeah. Um, did you get any further? Did you, like, because, I mean, I remember the copy you sent me, but did you, did you go any further than that? Have you worked on it since then? Because <laughs> that's like a year plus ago. Um... Oh yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Um. Oh, caboose. He's adorable. Your dad's fun. I'd love to sit down with your dad. He'd. Oh, I'd. He'd hate me. Your dad would hate me. I'd fucking run circles around him. That'd be fun. People don't like having every single thing they say refuted. I find, <laughs> like, people don't enjoy you saying literally. No, that's wrong like four dozen times during a conversation. <laughs> yeah, no, that's just blatantly wrong. Well, it's agreed to disagree. No, no, that would imply that would imply that I, I that you have some correct statements in there and that I'm giving you room to disagree that on some philosophical No, you're you're literally just incorrect. This isn't a matter of opinion. This is a matter of fact. You're wrong. Yeah, people don't like that. I'd have fun doing it, though. <laughs> exactly, Amorous. Yeah. Um, that's about the time my father starts screaming and punching countertops, which is why I'd prefer not he'd bring, uh, he not bring up politics, economics, religion, etc. around me at all. Uh oh, open jail. I had one of those. I, I wore my stepfather down. He won't even fucking talk to me about it. He he won't because he knows I'll I'll fucking win. I'll fucking win. We will fact check the shit out of you live using using a smartphone, right? Like, I, let's do this. Let's do this. He he can't win a fucking argument, so he just fucking yells and screams, and he can't yell and scream anymore because I figured out how to dis disarm that one too. Yeah. It's, it's fucking, it, 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 he's fucking, he literally has no tools anymore. He just won't discuss it. He will not discuss it. Yeah, Zippy, we're shitting on dummies. Um, I hope you get back into it though, Mitre. I want to see, I want to see that published novel. I'll buy a copy. Uh, I'd love to hear you take on my mother, but she'd never agree to a discussion she'd possibly be embarrassed by. I'm curious to see how a conversation between you and he would go because he's a little more open-minded than I'm making him sound. He's a good conversation with other leftists before, but he's had plenty of bad ones too. Well, Caboose, I'd do it. Um, oh, no, OpenGL. I would use I would use formalized, formalized systems of knowledge then. I would pull out textbooks. I would pull out the International Encyclopedia of Political Science. I would do that. I'd be like, all right, well then let's go to formal, uh, formal sets of knowledge. Um, if we're discussing uh, philosophy, we'll use Oxford and Stanford, the uh, uh, the Stanford ph uh, uh, philosophy set, the Plato uh, the Plato uh, site, or the Oxford philosophical texts. Right? Like I have all of them. Yeah, like I would go to formalized sets. Oh no, I have I have like I if I needed to come prepared, I'd come prepared open jail. That I would I would go knowing that I'd go hard copy. I'd go hard copy. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's do this. 
It's in a book. It's in the book, man. Let's do this. All right. Yeah. Knowing that, I'd, I'd fucking work around it. People hate me, man. It's it's rough. It's fucking rough. I like to win. That's why I don't go into debate bro circles. I'm a recovered. I'm like a recovered fucking debate bro. If if I know your tactics ahead of time, which is what you do, if I know your tactics, then I'm gonna fucking find ways to kneecap them in advance. It's it's bad. It's bad. It's addictive behavior. Um. Oh, um, okay, so Caboose, the reason they do that, um, the, the, the recipe thing, um, is because basically that's how you can copyright the page. The recipe isn't copyrightable. All the other stuff is. Yeah. Also, it creates engagement. Eventually, it gets to the point where he... Um, oh, it's fucking obnoxious, Caboose. It's absolutely obnoxious. I, I agree a thousand percent. Um, but also, I'm at the point where I don't think I've consulted a recipe in years. Like, I can, I can conceive of a recipe. Uh, it gets to the point where he starts voicing a desire to kick my ass or whatever. I've taken responding to his very right-wing white man threat with a white man response. <sighs> Do it. If that's what you want, I'll press charges. <laughs> the last time it shuts him up. Nice. The last time my stepfather th tried that sort of shit, I rolled out the guilt trip of guilt trips. Oh, yeah. Oh, I fucking rolled out the guilt trip. There's very few people in his world that he looks up to. One of them was his uncle, Arthur. And the last time this came up was because I was criticizing the military. And Uncle Arthur served in the military. Uncle Arthur fought in World War II. Uncle Arthur was the one who took the original Colt 1911 over in WW2 and came back with notches on the wooden grip. All right? Good old Uncle Arthur. Yes. Uncle Arthur would have smacked the shit out of you for saying that. Really? Do you think that that's what Uncle Arthur would do? After he laid down potentially his life, took the lives of other humans, and saw his fellow brothers in arms die in the trenches, die at the hands of the Nazis who were silencing their critics. Do you think that Uncle Arthur would smack me for criticizing a bloated military that wages unethical, illegal wars? Or do you think that Uncle Arthur would smack the shit out of you for attempting to silence me for making that criticism, for embracing my First Amendment rights? Who do you think Uncle Arthur would actually side with in this instance? And also, while we're talking about Uncle Arthur, how do you think he'd feel about you abusing his name in order in an attempt to win an argument with me from beyond the grave? Do you think he's looking down from heaven right now with pleasure on his face as you say this to me, as you threaten violence towards a family member in his name? Do you think this will please Uncle Arthur? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, I've never met this man in my life. Uncle Arthur was dead and buried long before I was on the scene. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I'll fucking elbow drop you to the ground, bitch, in his name. Right? Like, who gives a fuck? But it won me the argument. Oh, he shut the fuck up real quick. Oh, he shut the fuck up real quick. <laughs> oh, 
fucking holier. Dude, you can't have sacred cows. You can't have sacred cows. You're going to engage in that sort of space. You're going to engage in that sort of rhetoric. Can't have sacred cows. They'll get used against you. Yeah. It was it was rough. It was fucking rough. He he was yeah. He apologized, by the way. Uh like the next day. The next day. Right? He eventually apologized too. Yeah, oh yeah. It fucking worked. It fucking worked. Um, dude, guilt guilt's a hell of a <sighs> He's Catholic, right? He was raised Catholic. And he invoked the name of a dead relative who he respects greatly in the name of violence. Right? Dude, that Catholic guilt reared its head overnight. I guarantee. I guarantee he was laying in bed and that shit just fucking ate at him. <laughs> that fucking shit they pumped their heads full, full of. Oh, that's rough. Catholic guilt's a bitch. Never apologize, always double down. Yeah, Ikea for assembling your own haunted house. No gods, no masters. Yep. Exactly, Zippy. Um, oof. Zippy, don't need to talk about. That is the military grade shit, as it were. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does a number on people. It does a number on people. And if you can weaponize it, oof. Um, uh, Interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's that Shakespearean shit, right, Fertus? There's this weird talking point among libs. You know Marx didn't actually write Das Kapital. It was actually his wife. My father-in-law pulled this one on me. I was a little taken aback, so I just replied, so what? Right? Like, you know, Shakespeare may have been someone else. Okay. Like, who, who gives a shit? Let's talk about the, the words on the page. I, I, okay. Somebody else wrote the words. We're talking about the text. I don't give a shit who wrote it. Marx's wife could have wrote, written it. Fucking Marx's like imaginary friend could have written it. I don't, I don't really give a shit. We're talking about the words in the book, right? It doesn't really matter who wrote it. So... A woman writing a book? How outrageous! If it were, if it were, uh, if we were in the 1850s, I know, right? Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me somebody's teaching women how to read and write now? Next, you're going to tell me somebody allowed them to vote too. I mean, are you shitting me? Holy fuck. Like, next they're going to be wanted in the workplace. That, dude, you can't have them in the workplace. They'll be distracting. This is, this is outrageous. Somebody, somebody needs to call their fucking congressperson. My congressperson is a woman? What the fuck? Yeah. Right? This is again single people. Married men now have two votes. <laughs> Hammers, that's a good one. Um, that yeah, like <laughs> Thank you, Adia. It's an actual argument, didn't make it up. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh for fuck's sake. I heard they're letting women folk do all sorts of things these days. I know. Ugh, it's an affront against God. Ugh. These people are fucking stupid, man. These people are fucking... Speaking of stupid, who saw the QAnon shit? Who saw the QAnon shit? 
Who saw the QAnon shit? The QAnon shit is hilarious, y'all. Hang on. I posted the video. This is, this is fucking, this is, this, yes. 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 It is almost 1229. Oh my God. This is so dumb. This is the, de this is the Any definition of dumb. The big reveal. Oh my God. The crowd is big. Ready to Okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at a video of people, QAnoners, who have gathered on the in and around the grassy knoll at Daily Plaza uh, where JFK was shot for the revelation, for the reveal that JFK Jr., who's dead, JFK Jr. is going to come back from the grave and announce his candidacy with Donald Trump as a running mate. They are standing around in the fucking rain. They waited all fucking day. Here go. It is almost 12.29. Any minute now, the big reveal. The crowd is big. I, Caboose, I got no fucking idea at this point. Um, there was a two and a half hour live stream some fucking person did from there, and you could like I I you could track it down. It was posted to Reddit. There's a two and a half hour live stream somebody did, just talking to people, walking around, fucking all serious, right? Like he was in, like he was one of them. It was, speaking of dumb people, right? Like, while we're talking about dumb people, let's just mention. Oh, did they pull it? They pulled it. I guarantee they pulled it. Oh, there's so much here. Oh, there's so much. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Thank God, Zippy. I think it's Zippy. No, who? who it's Cupcake. Cupcake that was fucking posting a bunch of them. Okay, so here's like the start. Here's like the early morning, right? They start trickling in. They start getting more and more. They said the thing, y'all. They fucking said the thing. 12 minutes until the big reveal. 12 minutes until the big reveal, y'all. It is almost 1229. It is. Let's, Let's go, go fake news. news. Let's <laughs> yeah. No, he's yeah. with WFA. Yeah. Yeah. I I I agree, tech support. I agree. Is this the one? No, this is the Rolling Stone one. Did we? Here we go. Hang. We got a did, did we land on the moon? No. Did we land on the moon? No. Got a troll. <laughs> These people are epic levels of stupid. They're epic levels of stupid. Yeah. I'm telling you. Oh, I when I saw that today, I I ah uh, ah, uh, I I legitimately love the Q and honors. I legitimately love the Q and honors. They are fucking hilarious. They're dangerous as shit, and they scare the hell uh, scare the hell out of me. But holy shit, do they come up with some funny shit? 
JFK is secretly alive and hasn't been dead since 1999 and is going to is running the Q shit behind the scenes to take down the global cabal of pedophiles and like horrible horrible communist liberals like Hil- Hillary Clinton and um and he is Trump's man on the inside and he's going to announce at I don't know like 12:30 today or yesterday or something in the middle of Daily Plaza uh, that he is fucking where his father was like shot, right? Like, who makes this shit up? Like, who the fuck comes up with this shit? <laughs> this is the, the, the tankies are just boring. They're fucking Stalin was great. Lysenko, Lysenkoism was true. Fuck your degeneracy. We'd put you on the wall, right? QAnon comes out with some crazy ass shit. You're like, well, at least that's new. You know, at least it's new. (laughs) Who is this that fucking put this? For twos? Okay, okay, but hear me out. JFK Jr. is actually James from the internet. (laughs) Oh... The best part is they fucking showed up in person. I know. Uh, If you had 200 shirts with JFK Jr. on the front, easy money. Yeah. $25 a pop. $35 a pop. $35 a pop. $35 a pop. You could probably get $45. $35 a pop. Yeah. Guaranteed. Um, you 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 could have walked. What's your cost on that? Who the fuck knows? Maybe, you know, a few hundred. You could have walked away from there with like, 6500 in pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Turn around, give it to a fucking mutual aid organization, turn around, use it to fund like a, a fucking legal fund for fighting the abortion shit in Texas. Just repurpose the money. Caboose, as far as I understand it, he's like, yeah, he's like some like inside deep plant or some shit like that, right? Like that's, that's why the fucking JFK, cause JFK spoke against secret societies and, um, so like JFK spoke against secret societies and that, that's why they took him out. And J- JFK Jr. was like, se- like secretly wanted to go like deep undercover or something like that. If somebody has like the documents for this, like the, 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 the sacred scrolls, I, we, I'd, I'd look at them. I'd look at them, but yeah, that's, that's like my peripheral level knowledge of what's going on here is it's, it's some like next level Alex Jones sort of conspiracy shit. Yeah. God, they're dumb. I mean, Caboose. I'm conservative and thought that shit was stupid. Well, you're not a QAnoner. I mean, we can talk about the, you know, how Burke was a fucking monarchist and conservatism finds its roots in monarchism and the, the maintenance of the status quo of a system that's oppressive is um, ethically challenged, shall we say. But just because you're conservative doesn't mean you're fucking functionally dumb. That, that, dude, that's some QAnon shit. I was laughing my ass off at that video today. I was laughing my ass off. My God, I love these people. I fucking love these people. Oh, just. Holy shit, man. Um. Oh, I love this kind of shit. Hang on, hang on. While, while we're watching videos of just dumb people, let's let's take a second here. The governor's race here in Virginia. Get it. What's the most important issue in the governor's race here in Virginia? Getting back to the basics of teaching children, not teaching them critical race theory. And, uh, and, and what is critical race theory? 
well i'm not going to get into the specifics of it because i don't understand it that much there it is something that i don't the, what little bit that i know i don't care for what little bit and, and do you what know have you heard that, that you don't yep. well, that you i'm don't not like. I'm, I'm not gonna I, I, you know come on I don't, uh, what you got i don't i don't have that much knowledge on it but okay. it's something that i'm not that i don't care for why don't you care for it important issue in the why don't you care for it is the follow-up question to that um and let's see see a lot of learning going on and that greatly concerned me I think there was a lot of learning loss uh, over the past year and a half. We all saw uh, with the kids at home and um, a lot of these options that you can get through the class. I, 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 wonder, I wonder which one of these people is the Fox News reporter. Could it be the generic blonde white woman? with just a pass or a fail um, and some of the measures that have sort of watered down uh, the standards in not just in Virginia, many places. But um, Mara and Brooke, thank you very much. It's Can great I say to one thing yeah, though absolutely. about I don't think people necessarily uh, truly understand what critical race theory is. Younger children are not being taught critical race theory. They can't understand critical race theory. They're being taught history. So when somebody here in Loudoun County, I understand, was upset that his second grade child was taught that Christopher Columbus um, killed many indigenous people, that's part of history. That is what Christopher Columbus did. So I have a hard time. I think Kids have to learn history, the good, the bad, the ugly, so they yeah, can become critical I don't think anybody's against that. I think we have thinkers. to do a fact check on the Christopher Columbus story as well. But um, Yeah, Mark Dice is a right-wing conservative uh, conspiracy theorist uh, YouTuber. <laughs> or has he been kicked off YouTube? I don't. I don't know if he he used to be a YouTuber, um, but he's a right-wing conservative conser conspiracy theorist. That's who Mark Dice is. He's still on YouTube. All right, fair enough. Um, yeah, he's he's chock full of good takes. Um. The uh, the I remember the Starbucks logo one about how the the naked woman on it with her legs spread like a prostitute and might uh, the company might as well call themselves slut bucks. Oh, yeah. Mark Dice is full of brilliant takes. So why did he get invoked again? I wasn't paying attention. Um. Oh, the conservative wants us to watch uh, Mark Dice videos. Oh, okay. I mean, see, this is the thing. Mark Dice does shit at this. If you want to fucking, like, talk about the left, go for tankies. That's an easy leg sweep, right? You you don't, like, here's 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 the part. It, like, let me, let me help you, seeing as you probably have never read Burke or anything and you don't understand the foundations of conservatism. But who knows? Maybe you have. Let me help you criticize the left because I'm a post-leftist, right? Um, doesn't mean I've left the left. It means I have stepped back and utilized anarchism as a lens of analysis to criticize the left and its hierarchical power structures and its substitutionalism, right? If you want to criticize the left, the easy go-to are tankies. You want to come at me with off-lefts. That's who you go, the, go for an easy leg sweep. The likes of like has running around on the internet, right? That's, that's who you want to go with. Um, so it's an easy, it's an easy hit. Um, and then I have to denounce them, but I denounce them all the time, 
So it's an easy comeback for me on that side because you don't understand my position just because I was openly criticizing the right and pointing out that the QAnons are a bunch of fucking dummies and you think I only criticize the right because you walked in here for the first time. But I sit here and actually criticize th people like tankies and, uh, and authoritarian leftists far more often than I end up criticizing the right because the right, what am I going to do, right? I reach across the aisle, I'll talk, to, I'll talk to them, but the fact of the matter is, is that we have a difference of uh, economic and philosophical opinion Sometimes I can bridge the gap with the individualist sort of aspect of anarchism, but, you know, yeah. I love that. That's the most brilliant cr uh, critique ever. Just wrong. Just, oh, the verbosity. The, the, the depth to which you, you explored that idea. It is, oh, it's a magnum opus of words. Um, anyway, I want to see more of this. Mm, you're a self-described conservative. You are the definition of, of fundamentally someone who would maintain the status quo of a monarchy. Anyway. Uh, you know, it, it, critical race theory, I think, sometimes is a little bit of a misnomer because what, what's happening is that there's a sort of a reformed thinking and approach to history that teaches that the country was founded in racism. You can say critical race theory is like a legal theory that is found more in colleges. Um, so maybe giving it that label has, has thrown some people off. But it doesn't mean that there's not things being taught that are teaching kids that they're sort of inherently... Um, you know, victims or oppressors. I um, think we'll have to so, agree to disagree on that because right. I have a different... Oh, I hate that argument. She fucking loses just by saying it. Um, Christopher, Christopher... Oh, my God. I... 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 Anybody know who this person's name was, by the way? Who, who was that reporter? Martha McCallum. Just out of curiosity, who the fuck is this person? Oh, okay. All right, I get it. Um, Dow Jones, associate in corporate relations uh, relations at Dow Jones and Company, Wall Street Journal Television, Wall Street Journal Report. Oh, she did a stint over at NBC, CNBC. Um, but then she specialized in Homeland Security and War on Terror nightly news, and then moved over to Fox News. Um, time slot op formerly occupied by Kelly File after Megyn Kelly's departure. She literally is just, she's, she's just, oh my God, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Tell me it's this obvious. So they just went from generic white woman number one to generic white woman number two. <laughs> Fox News. Be less predictable with that shit. Um, Caboose, that's the same person. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 they're doing something specific, Caboose. Um, hey, Judge. Oh, probably. Max, yes, I, I, I know what they look like.
So they're all uh, Univision. Um, Univision. All part of a captive breeding program. <laughs> um, Victorious. N- no. No. We generally don't. Um, all right. <clears throat> Let's do section four of this document. I want to get this fucking document worked through. <sighs> uh, it's just a fitted ball cap. Um, yeah. Um, flex fit. Yeah, no, I'm good. Um, I don't wear people's brand. If you want to pay me to wear your advertising, that's another issue. But I don't pay to wear people's advertising. Of course, I didn't pay for this hat at all. Uh, But that's another story entirely. Um, One I've told before. (laughs) So, yeah, I I didn't uh, pay for this hat. Um... Oh, this one. Yeah, I know this one. Uh, Amorous. This one's made the rounds a few times. Hang on. Before I start, uh, I'll show this one. Just while we're talking about dummies. <clears throat> Electricity is a mystery. No one has ever observed it. So everybody knows. This is from um, Science for a Christian Schools Home Teachers Edition. Just so you know. No one has ever observed it or heard it or felt it. We can see and hear and feel only what electricity does. We know that it makes light bulbs shine and irons heat up and telephones ring, but we cannot say what electricity itself is like. We cannot even say where electricity comes from. Some scientists think that the sun may be the source of most electricity. Others think that the movement of the earth produces some of it. All anyone knows is that electricity seems to be everywhere and that there are many ways to bring it forth. How would you have to change the way you get ready for school if you did not use electricity? The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lighted the, light, uh, lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. Psalm seventy-seven, eighteen. Oh, Crystal, I've held this book in my hand. Crystal, I would love to have a copy of that book. I'd love to have a copy of that book. All factual information. I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, (coughs) If you think Bill Gates is like an evil soul, like Victorious, I don't know what the fuck you're on. Jesus Christ. That's some, like, fucking grand conspiracy shit. Judge, no. No books are meant to be burned. I truly believe that through my through my entirety of my being. We need that book to exist. We need that book to exist so we can point to it and go, that is an example of bullshit. Here's why. Um... Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, fucking who post who posted this for Christian fundamentalist. You cannot hear or see electricity. Me an intellectual.
<laughs> this is CGI propaganda. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, with the correct uh, grounding and equipment, Victorious? Yes, in fact, you can. Um, there are many people that do. Um, oops. It's, it's a thing. Science, bitches. It's amazing what science can do for you. Um, Zippy, I would love to do it as well. I would absolutely love to do it. Yeah. Uh, as, as a performer as well. As a performer, I'd love to do it. I'm not even into the, like, interpretive dance fucking, like, performance art territory. Never was. But I would love to do that. That would be that would be a fun thing, for sure to wield it. Um, Zippy, it depends on the metal, I'd imagine, and the suit. Like they wear a suit that conducts it outside of them. Um, it, it is specifically um, it, it's a thing. Um. So, either way, we shat on the conservative. Oh my god, I'm blue. You're pink. Let's go, Zippy. I'd I'd fucking be down in, a, in an instance. Um, in an instant. Um, we shat on the conservative. We shat on the QAnoners. You now we've done some like Christian homeschool bullshit. Um, now I need to go back to. <laughs> Um, now I, I, I need to be, um, I, I need to get some more of the document done. So, uh, oh Lord. Um, cupcake. I'm not entirely for sure. Uh, sure. Um, but this hurts us as much as it hurts you. I don't think it does, Karina. I don't think it does. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Chapter 4, Section 4. How does private property affect relationships? Obviously, capitalist private property affects relationships between people by creating structures of power. Property, as we've argued all throughout this document, creates relationships based on domination and thus cannot help but produce servile tendencies within those subject to them. It also produces rebellious tendencies as well. The actual ratio between the two tendencies dependent on the individual in question and the community they are in. As anarchists have long recognized power corrupts, Lord Acton's rule. Power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, but those subjected to it and those who exercise it. While few, if any, anarchists would fail to recognize the importance of possession, which creates the necessary space all individuals need to be themselves, they all agree that private property corrupts this liberatory aspect of property by allowing relationships of domination and oppression to be built on top of it. Because of this recognition, all anarchists have tried to equalize property and turn it back into possession. Also, capitalist individualism actively builds barriers between people. 
Un under capitalism, money rules and individuality is expressed via consumption choices, i.e. money. But money does not encourage empathy with others. As Frank Str uh, Stronach, chair of Magna International, a Canadian auto parts manufacturer that shifted its production to Mexico, put it, to be in business, your first mandate is to make money, and money has no heart, no soul, no conscience, no homeland. Cited by Doug Henwood, Wall Street, uh, page 113. And for those who study economics, it's a seen, it is seen that this dehumanizing effect strikes them as well. Quote, Studying economics also seems to make you a nastier person. Psychological studies have shown that uh, uh, economics graduate students are more likely to free ride or shirk contributions to an experimental public goods account in the pursuit of higher private returns than the general public. Economists also are less generous than other academics in charitable giving. Undergraduate economics majors are more likely to defect in their classic prisoner's dilemma game than any other major. And on other tests, students grow less honest expressing less of a tendency, for example, to return found money after studying economics, but not studying a control subject like astronomy. This is no surprise, really. Mainstream economics is built entirely on a notion of self-interested individuals, rational self-maximizers, who can order their wants and spending accordingly. There's little room for sentient uncertainty, uh, selflessness, and in social institutions. Whether this is an accurate picture of the average human is open to question, but there's no question that capitalism as a system and economics as a discipline both reward people who conform to the model. Again, Doug Henwood, Wall Street, page 143 for citation. Which, of course, highlights the problems within the trader model uh, advocated by Ayn Rand. According to her, the trader is the example of moral behavior. You have something I want, I have something you want. We trade and we both benefit, and so our activity is self-interested and no one sacrifices themselves for another. While this has some intuitive appeal, it fails to note that in the real world, it's pure fantasy. The trader gets to get the best deal possible for themselves, and if the bargaining positions are unequal, then one person will gain at the expense of the other. If the commodity being traded is labor, the seller may not even have the option of not trading at all. The trader is only involved in economic exchange and has no concern for the welfare of the person they're trading with. They are a bearer of things, not an individual with a wide range of interests, concerns, hopes, or dreams. They are... These are irrelevant, unless you can make money out of them, of course. Thus, the trader is often a manipulator, and outside novels, it's most definitely a case of buyer beware. If the trader model is taken as the basis of interpersonal relationships, economic gain replaces respect and empathy for others. It replaces human relationships with relationships based on things, and such a mentality does not encompass how interpersonal relationships affect both you and the society you live in. In the end, it impoverishes society and the individual. Yes, any relationship must be based upon self-interest. Mutual aid is, after all, something we do because it benefits. we benefit from it in some way. But the trader model presents such a narrow self-interest that it is useless and actively impoverishes the very thing we should be protecting, individual, individuality and interpersonal relationships. See? Short and sweet. I told you, section four and five are short and fucking sweet. We're going to burn through section four and five and we'll be done with chapter four. And then maybe we'll take the rest of the week off. Maybe we won't work into, work into chapter five. Chapter five is one, it, there's no subsections to chapter five. There's, we may do chapter five this week. <laughs> We may get up to chapter six just to be done with it. Um, I've gone through them before. It's, it's a whole bunch of fucking here. <clears throat> Are anarcho-capitalists really capitalists? Why is the failure of, to renounce hierarchy the Achilles heel of right-wing libertarianism? How libertarianism is right-wing, uh, right libertarian theory? 
Um, is right libertarian theory scientific in nature? By the way, the answer is no to all of these. Um, is anarcho-capitalism a new form of individualist anarchism? No. What do anarcho-capitalists mean by freedom? Um, slavery. What are the implications of defining liberty in terms of property rights? How does ca uh, private property affect uh, freedom? Can anarcho-capitalist theory justify the state? But surely transactions on the market are voluntary. They're not. But surely circumstances are the result of liberty and so cannot be objected to? Uh, no. And yes, they can. Do libertarian capitalists support slavery? Yes. But surely abolishing capital would restrict liberty? No. Why should we reject the so-called anarcho-capitalist definitions of freedom and justice? Because they're bullshit. Why do anarcho-capitalists generally place little or no value on equality? Because it undermines their entire system. Why is this disregard for equality important? Because, with, <laughs> because without it, they don't have a system. But what about anarcho-capitalist support for charity? It's bullshit. What is the right libertarian position on private property, which is just the section we, we're, do, we're doing this chapter right now? What is wrong with homesteading theory of property? What is, why is the Lockean proviso important? How does private property affect individualism? How does private property affect relationships? Does private property coordinate without hierarchy? So there you go. Chapter five will be privatized. Why will privatizing the commons increase liberty? No. Um, so... That's uh, chapter 12. All right, let me get through section five. And then we're done for tonight. <clears throat> uh, conversationalist Biden, but I'd probably come away with a better story for, from talking to Trump. Biden would be a better personal conversationalist, for sure. But Trump would definitely be a better story for me to tell later. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Lada, I'm also now a secret fascist. Yeah. CEO and president of Antifa. Um, CIA agent. Uh, CEO, uh, CEO and president of Antifa. CIA agent. Um, so, pay, paid agent for George Soros, um, a member of the Illuminati slash Freemasons, um, a member of the gay mafia, a secret society that dates back to prehistory that's, uh, that's been responsible for the downfall of entire societies and empires, and now I'm also a secret fascist. Just fucking racking up those titles. I'm, I'm busy. 33, victorious. Um, <clears throat> Aspen, you know, it's, it's like being on a board of directors. Eventually, once you rise to the ranks, you're not really required to do that much. It's just, you know, it's a lot of it's in name only. I don't do much for the, you know, Antifa these days. And besides, Antifa are the real fascists anyway. So that's, you know, sort of a synergy thing going on. Um. Uh, this is, it's not a book, it's an FAQ, it's an extension of the Anarchist FAQ, and it's a set subsection that's dedicated to um, explaining why ANCAPs, so-called anarcho-capitalists, aren't anarchists at all. And we're just slowly creating a series of these reads. I record them using a subset of technology. Um, Secret fascist authoritarian Antifa CEO Soros paid and CIA agent su uh, supreme leader of the cult of anarchism. Kai. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. There you go. Um, we're on uh, chapter four, section three, if you want to follow along in your uh, reading guide. <laughs> Oh, do we have a, um, first of his name, <laughs> do we have, um, do we have somebody that wants to discuss theology? Because after I'm done with this section, I will more than happily bring someone on the air who wants to discuss theology. Yeah. I've been an ordained minister for 19 years now. Um, 
I'd love to. I, I always, I always enjoy a good theological conversation. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, caboose. I'm sorry. Well, that's your on you though. All right, here we go. Let me get this done. This will go quickly. Chapter four, section five. Does private property coordinate without hierarchy? It is usually defined right libertarians maintaining that they uh, that pri- it's usually found that right libertarians maintain that private property i.e. capitalism allows economic activity to be coordinated by non-hierarchical means. In other words, they maintain that capitalism is a system of large-scale coordination without hierarchy. These claims follow the argument of noted right-wing free market economist Milton Friedman who contrasts quote Central planning involving the use of coercion, the technique of the army or the modern totalitarian state with voluntary cooperation between individuals, the technique of the marketplace, as two distinct ways of coordinating the economic activity, economic activity of large groups, millions of people. See Capitalism and Freedom, page 13. However, this is just playing with words. As they themselves point out, the internal structure of a corporation or capitalist economy is not market, i.e. non-hierarchical structure. It is a non-market or hierarchical structure of a market participant. See Chapter 2, Section 2, more on that. However, market participants are a part of the market. In other words, capitalism is not a system of coordination without hierarchy because it does, uh, because it does contain hierarchical organizations, which are an essential part of the system. Indeed, the capitalist company is a form of central planning and shares the same technique as the army. As the pro-capitalist writer Peter Drucker noted in his History of General Motors, quote, there is a remarkably close parallel between General Motors' scheme of organization and those of the two institutions most renowned for administrative efficiency, that of the Catholic Church and that of any uh, that of the modern army, quoted by David Enger, Apostles of Greed, page 66. And so, Capitalism is marked by a series of totalitarian organizations, and since when was totalitarianism liberty enhancing? Indeed, many so-called anarcho-capitalists actually celebrate the command economy of the capitalist firm as being more efficient than self-managed firms, usually because democracy stop, uh, stops action with debate. The same argument is applied to the fascist to the political uh, applied by the fascist to the political sphere. It does not change much, nor does it become less f- uh, fascistic when applied to economic structures. To state the obvious, such glorification of workplace dictatorship seems somewhat at odds with an ideology calling itself libertarian or f- anarchist. Is dictatorship more liberty enhancing to those su- uh, subject to it than democracy? I mean, anarchists doubt this. In order to claim that capitalism coordinates individual activity without hierarchy, right libertarians have to abstract from uh, individuals and how they interact within companies and concentrate purely on relationships between companies. This is pure sophistry. Like markets, companies require at least two or more people to work. Both are forms of social cooperation. If coordination within companies is hierarchical, then the system they work within is based upon hierarchy. To claim that capitalism coordinates without hierarchy is simply false. It's based on hierarchy and authoritarianism. Capitalist companies are based upon denying workers self-government, i.e. freedom, during work hours. The boss tells workers what to do, when to do, and how to do, for how long. This denial of freedom is discussed greater in depth in various sections across this document. Because of the relations of power it creates, opposition to capitalist private property and so wage labor and the desire to see it ended is an essential aspect of anarchist theory. Due to its ideological blind spot with regards to apparently voluntary relations of domination and oppression created by the force of circumstances, see section two on this one, uh, so-called anarcho-capitalism considers wage labor as a form of freedom and ignores its fascistic aspects when not celebrating those aspects. Thus, so-called anarcho-capitalism is not anarchist. By concentrating on the moment, the contract is signed. They ignore that freedom is restricted during the contract itself. While denouncing, correctly, the totalitarianism of the army, they ignore it in the workplace. But factory fascism is just as freedom-destroying as the army or political fascism. Due to this basic lack of concern for freedom, so-called anarcho-capitalists cannot be considered as anarchists. Their total lack of concern about factory fascism, i.e. wage labor, i.e. slave labor, places them totally outside the anarchist tradition. 
Real anarchists have always been aware of that private property and wage labor restrict freedom and desired to create a society in which people would be able to avoid it. In other words, where all relations are non-hierarchical, heterarchical, and truly cooperative. To conclude this chapter, to claim that private property eliminates hierarchy is demonstrably false. Nor does capitalism coordinate economic activities without hierarchical structures. For this reason, anarchists support cooperative forms of production rather than capitalistic forms. Bam. Told you we'd knock that out. All right, let me turn all of the alerts and shit back on now. Um, follows, re-enabled. Subs, re-enabled. Hosting, re-enabled. Bits. Re-enabled, though I need to fix that. Raids. Re-enabled. Well, what's the deal with the bits one? Because it's supposed to be the spinning A. Let me test this. Hang on. Interesting. Hmm. That's weird. Oh, dummy. God, I'm fucking... Jesus Christ, Kai. Jesus Christ, man. Oh. Okay. That needs changing, though. Uploads. Save that. Okay, now I just need to... change basically everything else. <laughs> I think that was the setting. Uh, let's see, hosts. I'm going to do this right now. Bear with me, guys. 30 pixels, 700 strong. Font setting, change the font color, 3700, next to, da -da 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 -da. and, oh, no, I don't want to change that. What I want to do is that one. This is going to be loud. Give me a second. Sorry. There we go. I just automatically happens that way um is that the same box that does why is it scaling differently all right i'll look into it another time that's weird anyway um Oh, God. All right. So what do we got? What do we got? I've been... Oh. I've been doing the end crap thing. Quit management. Save as... Oh, you know what I didn't do? Yeah, okay. Makes right. But to worship rights, even when they obviously... I need to f sort some of these. Yeah, I'm appropriates gonna... and uses. Okay, I got some post-show workflow. 
that I need to do. Is it Friday? When did we, who's here, who was here for, um, it was Friday, right? That I had to stop DGen story time and fucking restart it. Who was here for that? Yes, it was Friday. Okay, cool. That was the 29th, right? 29th. Okay. So... I'm guessing this is Ancraps 4.2, No, that's not 4.3. All right, so Saturday rolls around. Okay. Chapter four, section two. Why is the... Okay, so this is 4.2. Sorry, I'm going to do this right now. Alright, so Saturday rolls around. I fucking Dom Con. Okay. So these two are that. Chapter 4, Section 2. Why is. Okay. Okay. I got it sorted. I got it sorted. I need to just take the, the 4.2 and 4.3 out. Okay, so that's. Gen story time, and I need to retitle that. Presented a case for private property right. Chapter four, section two. Okay, so that's four point two. Um, All right. All right. So Saturday rolls around. Chapter four, section two. Why is the Lockean proviso important? Robert Nozick, in his work, Anarchy, State, and Utopia, presented a case for private property yeah. rights. All right, so that's 4.2. That means... That's DGen story time. Chapter 4, Section 3. Okay, now I got my files sorted. 4.3, 4.4, and chat has probably lost their fucking minds and by the time I uh, have come back. Let's see. Download clip. Um... That is 10.29.2021. And then this is 11.01.2021. Uh, nope. That's 11.2. Two. I had one on Monday.
equal to worlds. Okay. So that's yesterday's. Um, it's one. All right. Um, actual. Oh, all right. Cool. That just helped me like get post show workflow done. That means that is two and four. Cool. All right. Cool. Coming back. I'm coming back. All right. Oh, what do we got? All right, which one of you wants to give me the TLDR? Because I know y'all been at it through the fucking, uh, through the end cap stuff. Uh, which reminds me, get to the section. There we go. Oh, well, I mean, okay. A fantasy mass genocider who made up his own god. All right. Thinks we should be ruled by monarchy because god. Genocidal monarchist. David, David Icke levels a batshit. Oh, all right. Well, that's, uh, I mean, that's a thing you can do, I suppose. Let me clear that. Hmm. Anyone who doesn't believe in his God should die and monarchy should enforce it. And you're engaging with these, this person? Like, y'all. Y'all. Come on. You know better than that. Clearly, they're either mentally disturbed or just trolling you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them the time of day. Um, 4.1. All right. And craps. Then, and we'll upload that. Um, 4.2. At the chud. <laughs> uh, true democracies don't work with capitalism. Shut alert. Fucking buying people is easier than uh, richer you are. That is true. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, close that. I don't need that. Oh, we're up to 4.3 already. I'm literally doing my post show workflow now. Like I, there's there's shit I didn't do last night because we played fucking seven days until like the wee hours, just the fucking, Oh my God, we were at it for a while. Um, see some trash I can feed the trolls is not how you solve the trash problem I know right um Jesse Joe's of Ariel's oh Jesus Christ you guys have lost the plot all right then 
I am. I'm literally going to finish my workflow. Fuck it. And that's four or five. All right. Four or five playlist. Cool. Um, that's chapter four done on the no and caps aren't anarchists playlist on YouTube. Nice. Um, and then I need to do the DSTs. I pieced at 145. When did y'all finish? Like 515? Uh, Karina? Something like that. Yeah, like, I, I don't know why y'all are fucking even bothering with that person. They're f fucking... Um, but, you know, like I said, you feel free to entertain yourselves. Because, um, I mean, I am sort of neglecting you at the moment anyway. Where is... How am I titling my DSTs? Okay. Um, desktop DST 1101. Which one story was this? In reverse and shit like that. And there's me standing next to him and like on the couch where my, right? Like, ah, yes. Okay. Okay. And... Playlist DJ and story time. Uh, this was recorded Monday and this is age restricted. Publish it. Cool. Um, All right, I think that's that workflow done. Cool. Um, do I need to bring this in somehow? Yeah, I think I do. Um, oh. All right. Interesting, Caboose. Um, all right. Well, then I need to call him up. I don't even... Would it... Swid Drizzle? SW Drizzle? Swid... Swidrizzles? Swidrizzles? I know you're having fun trolling chat and all. But I'm actually going to start addressing you directly now that I'm done with my post-show workflow. Um, I, I agree, Crix. I, I agree. Um, what's your deal, bro? I do. I do. Uh, dumb nog. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, whip it out. Whip it out, baby. Hey, you got to come to Vegas. Got to come to Vegas. Yeah. I mean, I'll have to check with my with my Dom as to whether I'm allowed to or not. But yeah. Come I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll be fine with it. As long as, as long as you don't mind being watched. You a bit of a voyeur? A bit of an exhibitionist because there's going to be a, a, a voyeur involved. Um yeah, if you yeah, I hope you don't mind exhibitionism. Better guess. Monarchy's fucking dumb. So is God. I mean, it depends how you want to define your God. I I define God as just existence, creation, plenum, the 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 very essence of all that exists, right? Um, amatic, hello all, but mostly Kai. Um.
so what's with the genocidal streak then? Actually, you know what? I don't like talking to somebody who's going to have to type. Do you want to talk to me directly? We'll get you a link. I'd rather just have this conversation with the person espousing these beliefs and see how ideologically consistent you are. Himself, it took, it took years. It took years himself. It took years. You guys just got, you guys were privy to the, like, tail end of it. Dude, so many fucking sadistic doms. So many fucking, like, rookie doms. So many, oh, it's just, it's bad. It's bad. Vegas, Vegas especially. Caboose. Oh, he doesn't have it in him. He doesn't. Caboose. I don't I don't believe for a second that this person is gonna espouse this on air. It's funny how when called up people immediately start to bow out so quickly. Um yeah, I want to hear more about it. I want to hear you tell me about it. Oh, himself. A fucking, like, true ownership scenario. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, dude, you, you, so many filters. So many filters you're running people through for that. It's dude, you, you're you're talking percentages of percentages of percentages territory. It's that's yeah, fractions of fractions of fractions of fractions of fractions. It's I wish you I wish you so much luck. This this I he will not be my forever dom, right? Like it's not like he's gonna look. If we end up in an ownership scenario, it will end the moment I leave this town. Right? Or he leaves this town, whoever comes first. He plans on moving back to San Diego. I plan on going back east. It would not be, it, we're not fit for the long run. But yeah, it dude himself. Uh, would you say that the 1% of the 1% of the 1% of the 1% <laughs> Matic? Yeah, I mean, basically it is, it is, it's fucking rough to do that. Exactly himself. That's, that's, dude, that's himself. That's about all you can hope you can hope for in the end. Hey, even people who are in like loving, like normal, normal, right? Loving normal relationships. There's no guarantee on that person could drop dead tomorrow they could fucking cheat on you you don't you don't know you don't know so at the end of the day all you have is the now find somebody for the now that's that's the you know find somebody for for the now <laughs> basically basically caboose um Oh, Steph's. That's felt life is like Facebook for for kinksters. It's not. I need a tighter filter than that. Um, I need a tighter filter than that. Yeah, don't worry. I I, you know. I have my methods. Um, and you know, it took long enough, but it paid off. Eventually. Pro oh, probably caboose. Probably. Yeah, there's, it's, yeah, yeah. We're, we're a fucking A. I'm working on learning about the DS lifestyle. Got to start somewhere, so I'm starting on the sub end, but damn, uh, I'm probably just a dom. Long road of learning ahead of me. Aspen, good luck. 
Uh, you know, Caboose, I'd be down to uh, talk to some of them, right? Have that shared ground of fe uh, like kink, and be like, all right, so does it? Does any of the like QAnon stuff come into play? I bet they're into age play. I bet they're into age play. They're constantly yelling, yelling their mouths off about fucking pedophilia. I bet they're into age play. Yeah, for sure. That's a cop out and you know it. You know that's a cop out. Every last part of your being knows that's a cop out. You know you just lied in chat. I know it. You know it. Chat knows it. That's a cop out. Uh, I will not go on air because my ide my ideology is too extreme and it's only accessible for me. It's a cop out. You've been espousing that ideology in chat this entire time. So you don't have a problem making it public. Um, and it's only accessible for me. Try me. You've yet to give me a try. Oh, yeah, himself. For sure. For sure. I have an interesting set of foundations. Ah, caboose! Way too many of those vehemently anti-pedo people to turn out to be, uh, people turn out to be pedos. Yep. Thank you for the resub, though, Caboose. Um, oh god, literal cucks for Trump. QAnoners fantasizing about Donald Trump either fucking them or fucking their spouses. Yes. Then why do you espouse it? Why are you talking about it in my chat? It's only for me. I don't see a problem with that being only for me. Yet you're talking about it. See, you see why I already know you're full of shit? It's because you're full of shit. Anybody with a decent fucking meter can read you're full of shit. You don't believe this shit. You don't believe it for a second. You just like getting rides out of people. You're a troll. Oh, well, then you have nothing else to do. Well, come on the air and espouse it uh, to me. Come on, convert me. Talk to me. I, I'm curious. Like, you have somebody on air who's literally got a room full of people who's willing to hear you out. I speak to people of all sorts of faiths, all sorts of wacky ideologies. I've had a fucking cult leader on before. Come on, try me. Or a wannabe cult leader, I should say. Yeah. Let's do this. Come on. I got questions. I haven't been following the conversation. I'm not biased against whatever had occurred because I was busy doing a reading from a document and wasn't paying a lick of attention to whatever you said or chat said. Yeah. Come on air. Including yours. Yes, I agree. So talk, talk to me. You can do it, Pookie. Come on. I, I believe you've got your big boy pants on tonight. Ah, there it is. There it is. So here's what's going to happen, Drizzle. Here's what's going to happen. So you know how this works. I'm going to ask you one more time to come on air and talk to me about this, uh, this topic. And if you give me another cop out, if you refuse, then what's going to happen is a little sound clip is going to play. And when it runs out of time, you will be escorted out. So, so, you know, I'm just telling you ahead of time. So how this is going to play out.
the ban already happened. And you notice, Pookie, you didn't bait me. I saw you for who you were from moment one. As soon as I started engaging, I'm like, there's a troll. That or he's mentally ill. Um, he was just a bad troll. The fact that any of you paid him a fucking lick of attention, I'm disappointed in some of you. Well, most trolls are dark triad territory, so fair amount of overlap. That, that was, yeah, come on, come on. Anyway. Post sugar high shenanigans. Steph. Steph. I, I, yeah. Yeah, Caboose. Caboose, you've done your fair share. Left just about two out of ten. Uh, you've done your fair share, so you get a good read on that shit. Uh, himself, in fact, Friday before last, um, there were two people who acted in good faith, got on the air. One of them was open-minded, had a good conversation. The second one, though we did not come to an agreement or an understanding in the end, he also acted in good faith and was a very good sport about it. We had two in one day. Of course, like I always say, it's about 98%. So there's our 2% in one day. We're pretty much full up for the next 6 to 12 months. <laughs> So don't expect it to happen again. Yeah, it was it was it was a day. Um So, yeah. Yeah, we had one dude who didn't understand. He just couldn't wrap his head around anarchism. He couldn't wrap his head around um, heterarchical organizational modalities. And so I brought him on air and I fucking taught him, showed him some group charts, walked him through a bunch of stuff, and he was receptive. He said, well, I, I may not agree, he said, but I understand now at least. And he said, I, I'm, I'm further along. I'm like, all right. I'll take it. I'll take it. And the other guy, we didn't even talk about politics. We talked about religion um, because, like, he was a neocon, like, self-described neocon. So there was no point in talking about politics. I'm like, I'm not going to talk to a fucking neocon about politics. Um, and, like, I mean, I will. I will. But I, I, I wanted to talk to him about the theology because one of his videos was like uh, accepting Christ or moving forward with Christ or accepting the love of Christ or something like that. I was like, he was an IT, he was in, he's an IT guy. He's going to school for computer stuff. Um, but he's also doing theater. I'm like, dude, I'm old school IT plus tons of theater. I'm like, we got tons of shit to talk about. Like, just come talk to me. So he took the invite. Um, and, you know, until we got onto the topic of religion, it was, it was a productive conversation. After that, it was a bit goofy. I mean, you know, but he was a good sport about it. He was an absolute good sport about it. And I respect him for it. Um, I need to know whoever just joined a uh, discord. Eight minutes ago. Who in here just joined the Discord server eight minutes ago? Because if I don't hear back from anybody in chat who joined Discord eight minutes ago, then I'm going to kick that user because that could be the person who was like Swizzle Sticks or whoever the fuck that was. So. Go watch the VOD. I always need things in charts. I can show you one of one of them. I just pinned it just recently. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, 
okay, this is this is like definitely one of the ones because I, I had to use this again the other day. Um, and cool. Yeah, yeah, it'll work with email. Um, I I had to discuss that again on one of the uh, one of the subreddits. Um, so yeah, I was I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna upload this to the server and pin it. Are you, are you okay, Victorious? You, you, you remind me of like Kvass. Yeah, I, you know, still. Uh, Kez, I booted the obvious troll when they refused to come on the air. I eventually started paying attention. I was like, oh, well, this is stupid. Um, just an obvious troll. And so they were removed. Um, and yeah, uh, I was just fucking talking to chat a bit. Um, and oh, also, um, I need to, there we go. I need to finish this. Playlist, DGen story time, age gated. I mean, that one doesn't necessarily need to be age gated, but you know what? We're going to do it anyway. Publish, done. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of new like follow emotes. Uh, we have the beta stuff, the the five beta, uh, the beta fucking follow emote program. You get five emotes uh, for um, just following the channel rather than subscribing. So yeah, I put in I put in a few. Beta. I have it. Here. Beta. Beta. Amazing. Um. So. No, victorious. God punk. No, don't don't ever apologize for that. Don't ever apologize for that, God punk. Um, thank you for the sub, by the way. How you been, Gut? You doing you doing okay? <laughs> Too many hours. I know, right? Oh yeah, I don't I don't remember my dreams for the most part, Victorious. So it's not really a thing for me. Um Alright, so that's done, that's done. Oh fucking Jesse Lee Peterson's fucking great. I don't know what you're talking about. He's amazing. That guy's great. I mean, yeah, sure. He's he's like unironically like an Uncle Ruckus type type character. Um, nice, nice guy. Um, wait, wait. What's your fish's name? Jesse Lee Peterson? Like the whole thing? Oh, I think I've seen part of that hatch. Actually, I think I've seen part of that. Yeah. Um hang on, let me check. I'm pretty sure I've seen it. Or as much as I could uh tolerate. because no one ever is prepared for the level of dumb 
that flat earthers bring to the table. Yeah. Fucking no one's ever truly prepared. I, I, I legitimately don't think anybody is ever truly prepared to talk to a flat earther. Like you, you, you think you are, you're like, Oh no, no, no. I can, I can talk about how the earth is an oblate spheroid and you know, yeah, the gravity mapping of the earth. And no, I can talk about this. And then you sit there across from somebody and they look you in the face and they're like, Oh, all that's lies. We've known the earth isn't flat since the Greeks ruled the known world how did we get like 2000 fucking years worth of like conspiracy never mind never mind i'm not prepared for this this is a level of dumb i did not expect right yeah it's no one's ever prepared to talk to a flat earther Axel <sighs> just comes back. These people vote. Um, oh, uh, Matic, Matic, control of what? Everything. Or, or, good night, Zippy, or you end up with the even crazier one. It's done by multidimensional demons. Why? Forget, for, forget that. Just forget, okay, cool. There's multidimensional demons. Why? Oh, well, you see, the lower vibrational frequencies of the third dimension are what they feed on. If they keep us in a state of controlled fear, then they are able to siphon off this energy. And this is what they use for, uh, to, uh, to empower themselves. They themselves are usually uh, sixth, ninth, or eleventh dimensional entities. So the eleventh dimensional entities tend to be more benevolent in nature and really don't have much engagement in this plane. How high are you? Right? That's the, the sort of shit you end up with sometimes. You're like... No, Kai, it's high. How are you? Um, yeah. It's, it's fucking... It's rough. It's fucking rough, man. Talking to a flat earther. Because you don't know what kind of what level of crazy you're gonna get. You're gonna get like the QAnon crazy, or you're gonna get the the spirit science crazy, right? Because these are two different tiers of crazy, and you don't know what you're gonna you're gonna roll those fucking dice, and you're gonna be like, ah, you know, all of academia, all of governance, all of corporate uh, corporate interests, the entire power structure of the globe is controlling us to keep us away from the resources on the outer uh, that is beyond the outer ice shelf and we're all locked in into this uh, this other area in which they can actually maintain us as a population okay cool well, you got some QAnon level shit right or you're gonna get the spirit science level multi-dimensional aliens ah okay then sometimes they cross over and they're in cahoots with the multi-dimensional aliens <laughs> Fair enough, Steph. I mean, this, this is a decent enough place to start, I suppose. Um, one I encountered a few weeks ago was a QAnon flat earther who was into the whole JFK assassination theories, 9-11, all conspiracies. And they were... Yeah. <laughs> And they were a black Hebrew Israelite. Of course they were, Gio. Of course they were. I. 
they are some of the most like if you encounter the black israelites on the streets of new york like just just get away dude they're they're violent like they're 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 like they're concerning right if you're obviously gay or you're a woman or you're white or you have a white partner or you're of mixed heritage dude they get like sincerely aggressive in your face it's it's legitimately concerning when you encounter them like on the streets of new york and shit like that because that's where you find the highest concentration of them for some reason and i still don't know why it's it's yeah it's it's fucking mm. yeah as soon as you said that gl is just like of course of, of course And, and, you know, basically, if you're not a black Hebrew Israelite, yeah, basically Matic, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting group. It's an interesting group. I have a cousin that believes that the sun is made of antimatter on the principle of we can't prove it isn't. And that's why we should believe in God. Caboose, I want to talk to, like, most of your family. Like, legitimately at this point. Like, I, I need to come visit you, and you need to, like, have... I, Caboose, next time you have a family, like, a family, like, picnic or get-together, I'm your plus one. Like, legit. I, 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 want, to sit, I want to sit down with your family. <laughs> My family's not as wacky as I'm making it sound. No, but you got some wacky fruit hanging from the tree. Um, good <laughs> logic. Black Israelites, isn't that an oxymoron? Oh, if you're not familiar with them, uh, um, Don Paleo. It's it's an interesting group. It's an interesting group. I'm not. Oh well, don't worry. You're one of the lucky ones then. And not lucky in the, like, uh, XKCD, you're one of the lucky 10,000 that get to learn something new today. Lucky as in, you're truly ignorant of these hate mongers, and you don't have to worry about it. Just just don't worry about it. It's like not knowing who the tankies are. You're lucky. Just trust me on this one. They're, they're, I don't even know. I, how do I sum up the black Israelites? Imagine the clan, but black. I mean, that's how it gets to my starting position, right? Like, that's that's where you need to start from, right? Just, just imagine the clan, but black. And go, for, go forward from there. Black Westboro, black Westboro Baptist Church. That's a good starting point, too. Yeah, that's a good starting point. They're, they're a hate organization. They hate gays. They hate trans people. They hate women that aren't in the kitchen in a traditionally conservative role. They hate white people. They hate Asian people. They hate Hispanic people. They hate everybody who isn't basically black Hebrew Israelite. Um, yeah, they believe in a whole bunch of conspiracies. The global, a global white homo conspiracy. There is no innate uh, homosexuality in, in in the black community. That that is a conspiracy thrust upon them by the the evil white man. Um, the whole just fucking just a, a a file index of holy shit, man. It's rough. Lots of bizarre historic revisionism. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yes, that too. Yes, that too. Oh, yeah, I forgot that entirely open GL. Um, they use the Christian Bible as their basis. They think Jews rule the wor rule the world, um, and that Jews co opted their history, and that they're the true original Israelites as the children of Ham. It's, oh. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I know, right? I love that checks checks notes fucking meme. Um. Oh god, punk. It dude. Oh, the ADL classes them as outspoken anti-Semites and racists, by the way. Just FYI. Uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center lists 144 black Hebrew Israelite organizations as separatist hate groups because of their anti-Semitic and anti-white beliefs. Former KKK Grand Wizard Tom Metzger once remarked to the SPLC, they're the black counterparts of us. Okay. The former clan Grand Wizard. Yeah, their fucking names are goofy. Fucking told the Southern Poverty Law Center. Yeah, they're basically us, but black. Game recognizes game. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> Before adding, and I respect them for that. <laughs> <laughs> Did, but it would be it would be fitting of his character. The yin and the yang. <laughs> it's, yes, that's not quite. Uh, Okay, victorious. I got, I got, I got, I got to put a chill pill you on uh, on you, victorious. Like for real. Like I got to like the animal shit and the fucking like the the praying for humanity's death shit. Fucking like you need to chill the fuck out, victorious. I don't know what your fucking deal is, what you're on tonight. You had a bunch of weird ass fucking takes that are borderline the entire time. And I seem to recall the last time you were here, I had to fucking warn you down too. Just chill the fuck out. Uh, good, 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 good. Good to know, Gemma. Balcom X in the middle. Uh, those names are the only thing I can respect about the KKK <laughs> that didn't ru ruin the term the Grand Wizard. Um, their actual title names are hilarious. Hang on, let me get them. Um... Grand Dragon, Grand Scribe, the Imperial Wizard, the Grand Titan, who's assisted by the Six Furies, the Grand Ex uh, Exchequer, and the Grand Scribe, all of who are appointed by the Grand Titan. Uh, the provinces uh, of the Empire are, um, are the second prescript identified a province as a, uh, equivalent to a county, supervised by a Grand Giant and assisted by four goblins. Um, yeah. Like these are these are the dens are the uh, are the organizations they have tribunals they have like yeah like is this is the KKK or the Tolkien Scouts we're talking about here, right? Ye old proud boy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm infinitely more afraid of the KKK now. I'm gonna get cone, cone of cold. Did, did the KKK read a bunch of Tolkien? I mean... So...
they're apparently the names the names find their origin in antebellum college fraternities and secret societies such as the the Ku Klux Adelphon which is the fraternity that was founded at the University of North Carolina known as Old Kappa Alpha right they were modeled on and embraced the leading features of the rituals of an order which has long been popular in many colleges and universities under various names, such as the Sons of Confucius, or I can't even say that fucking word, but always styled ancient and honorable and mirth-provoking. This is from this, this is a direct quote, by the way, from John Lester, one of the original members of the group. Walter Fleming stated in a footnote to Lester's text that the contemporary early 20th century Southern college fraternity that most uh, that most nearly mirrored the entire the early clan was Ku Klux Adelphon at UNC, UNC and the institution of snipe hunting. For those of you who do you do, who, who knows about snipe hunting, um, the original prescript of the Ku Klux Klan was adopted by convention in Nashville. Ah, yes, of course, Caboose, you were in the Cub Scouts, so yeah, you definitely know about snipe hunting. So, snipe hunting is a practical joke. It's, it's, it is, it's, it's, it's existence in North America is, like, dated back to, like, 1840 and shit like that, right? Um... There is there is a family of bird called snipes, but that's not what that is. It's a mythical creature called a snipe. Go find a snipe. You find the snipe. Hunt the snipe. Hunt it. You go fucking find the snipe. The, the Boy Scouts have been doing this for fucking years. If you're new and you're out in the woods, they will fucking fuck with you. And it's, it's, shh, shh, shh. You hear that? Did you hear that? That's a snipe. There's one close. Yeah. Yeah, let's be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Go go crouch in that bush and just wait. It's going to, it'll walk right up to you if you just wait long enough. Just shh, 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 shh. Snipe hunting. Set you an impossible task and then just let you spin your wheels. Um... There's there's variations, um, like hold this bag, wait here, make particular noises. There's all sorts of variations. There's spins people put on it. You're right. Um, the Boy Scouts version of being sent to the hardware store to ask for a left-handed screwdriver and a long wait. Um, or um, yeah. Yeah, or blinker, uh, like a, a blinker fluid. The uh, the the turn signal fluid. That's a that's a dad favorite. Just uh, just run into the store really quickly. Here's a here's a twenty dollar bill. Run into the the uh, the uh, into the the whatever your fucking automotive store is and ask him. I just need I need a pint of um, turn signal fluid. It's a little kid, you know, shit like that. Nice for twos. Um, I got suddenly super nostalgic for Cub Scout camping. I mean, as long as you don't get diddled, it's a good time from what I hear. Also a good way to get some uh, early life uh, action going from what I also hear. Um, oh, um, here. This is a brochure that Amazon offers its uh, in new employees. It's 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 like a little local, like they print them out for the areas. Just FYI.
basically, Caboose. Basically. Yeah. Um, Walmart does effectively the same thing. Walmart uh, offers applications for food stamp assistance uh, as part of the hiring process. Like they'll, they'll, do you need assistance when you get a job at Walmart? Yeah. Oh, um, oh, himself. It'd be great. It'd be great. It'd be great. It'd be great. Um, Oh, Caboose, I have a video that I saved a link just for you, Caboose. 100%. You're going to love it, Caboose. No, no, no. You're going to absolutely... Caboose, I'm going to melt your fucking heart. I'm going to melt your fucking heart. Are you ready, Caboose? Tell me I don't fucking know you. Tell me I don't fucking know you. I saw it and thought of you, Caboose. <laughs> I think I have diabetes for that video. Uh, Caboose, Caboose used to have rats and misses having rats. So I saw this exceedingly ridiculous, a uh, ridiculously adorable video of some rats. And I was like, there's no fucking way I don't, I, I don't save that for Caboose. So, um, and Caboose, link in chat if you want it. All right, Walata. Uh, how many towns? I bet they'll be hot bunking in shipping containers and triple shifts. I mean, <laughs> rebel. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Yeah, they will. Um, one of the most disgusting things I've seen is my uncle, Walmart corporate, until he retired, argue that welfare is bad because people exploit welfare by making sure you fucking corporate welfare receiver Walmart. Yeah, uh, by making sure they don't have too many working hours at Walmart, so they can't, so they can get food stamps and shit. I'm like, you realize that's because what you what you pay them, they can't afford to, uh, not to, right? Yeah, that. Dude, dude, dude. <laughs> uh. So, ah, contacts. Um, did everybody see the protest with the New York City police officers? over the vaccination mandate. Because if you didn't... If you told me 
Okay, so we've got my body, my choice in the background. Your fear should not cost me my job. Um, fucking do not comply. My body, my choice, anti-mandate. Hold the line. All right? Fucking. If you told me this photo was photoshopped and there was like five people in this photo, I would have to sit down and blow it up first. 35, I think, Steph. I think the number was 35. Don't, I don't know, uh, like, it, I think it was 30, 34. It was 34. It was 34 people. But I would have to enlarge it. Like, if I were on a cell phone, I'd be like, I mean, maybe. This might be Photoshop. I don't fucking know. They're all, they all kind of look the same. I didn't know reactionary had a crystal structure. <laughs> this picture makes me believe I might actually not, uh, might not actually be white for two. So I, I, for those of you who don't know, here, I'm not going to play the song, but you need to like, you need to hear the lyrics. All right. No effects wrote a song years and years ago now called don't call me white. Don't call me white. Don't call me white. The connotations wearing my nerves thin. Could it be semantics generating the mess we're in? I understand it. I understand that language breeds stereotype, but what's the explanation for the malice for the spite? I wasn't brought here. I was born circumcised, categorized, allegiance sworn. Does this mean I have to take such shit for being fair skinned? I ain't no part of conspiracy. I'm just your average Joe represents everything. Don't call me white. Don't call me white represents everything I hate. The soap shoved in your mouth to cleanse the mind. A vast majority of sheep. A buttoned collar starched and bleached. Constricting veins. The blood flow to the brain slows. They're so fucking ordinary white. Don't call me white. Oh, we're better off this way. Oh, say what you've got to say. So go ahead and label me an asshole because I can accept responsibility for what I've, de uh, what I've done, but not for who I am. Don't call me white. I mean, if it's a social construct, right? I don't want a part of it. Like, is this is this some sort of fucking lock shit? Right? Are we talking Rousseau's social compact territory? Because I refuse. I refuse. Don't call me that then. I ain't white. I don't want anything. I don't want any part of that. Right? Like. Cat's been trying to get me to run the fucking Spanish grift for ages now. Cat's like, fucking dude, you can pass for Sp you can pass for Spanish. Just do it. Fuck. You. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Rumble. That's fucking rough. She believes that her her kid's autism was caused by the vaccine. Uh, uh, Irish, Scottish, German, Dutch with a splash of French and a drop of jerky. How white am I? According to the amount of light I reflect, too white. <laughs> Um, wait. Yeah, it is himself. It's the number one cause of death for them. Um, see the tankies are infighting now too, by the way. Uh, tankies are in fighting. They're like ca breaking up and ca calling each other fucking Nazbols and shit now. Well, gotta love it. Um. Oh. Jeez. 
Jesus, Aspen. Um, tankies can't even do tanky unity. Precious. No, they can't. Gemma, they can't. Um, the Zillow shit. The Zillow shit. So, um, you guys know about how Zillow was buying and flipping homes, right? Like a, a lot. They were Zillow was dry, using their data analytics to drive up costs for real estate in areas, right? Zillow lost three hundred eighty-one million dollars on that program last quarter. The company is ending the program and says it has it's planning to cut its workforce by twenty-five percent as a result. So, in short, get fucked, Zillow. Oh, I love that shit. Was John Stokes a faker? Type in John Stokes in YouTube. He's the one who died of myocarditis. Myo, uh, uh, myocarditis. Uh, yeah, myocarditis. Yeah, I had it right the first time. Just had to fucking do it out correctly. Um, yeah. Did he? Did he not die? Either way. Do you understand the risks associated with the vaccine are less than female birth control? Are you going to start protesting female birth control anytime soon? That's that's just my question. Because the risks associated with female birth control are far and beyond the risks associated with the COVID vaccine. Like orders of magnitude, multiple orders of magnitude. You going to be protesting female birth control anytime soon? You going to you going to mouth off about that? Bullshit. They did not die from the COVID vaccine. You did not have two people in your fucking family die from the COVID vaccine. What are you on recently, Victorious? You used to be normal. You used to be like a functioning human being, but you have lost the plot within the last few fucking months. I don't know what your fucking deal is. You've like completely lost the plot. Are woke here? I mean, people are awake here. As for whether we put up with woke scolding, no. But it depends what you mean is woke. It's all fucking semantics at the end of the day. <sighs> you gonna respond to that? Um, anyway. Hey, maybe, maybe, Sam. Who the fuck knows? Thank you, RDF. <gasps> that's why. Oh, that's why. All right. Um. Oh, uh, Gem, I heard that they found the missing four-year-old. Just FYI. Um. How the fuck? Yeah, how does fucking Sticks have a have a Twitch channel? That's that's the question we need to be fucking asking. Like, how the fuck has that dude not been banned?
Holy shit. Rumble? Same here. Same here. Yeah, my COVID vaccination went well. Uh, looking forward to the fi to Pfizer releasing the dev kit so I can program my own nanobots. I know, right? I want to get them to respond to other cellular fields, not just the 5G. I'm thinking if I can maybe uh, like like downgrade them. Oh, Jesus Christ. Gemma. Um... So, Tories. Now, 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 the two of you, we went through the technical definition of fascism at the top of the show. I don't need to go through it again, though. Yeah, caboose, basically. And I mean, as far as Johnson & Johnson is concerned, you know my opinion on them. They can go fuck themselves. John Burke, though, may interest you. You mean the radio, uh, the uh, album producer? I mean, you know, I'm familiar with a little bit of his work, but, like, um... I mean, I'm not, I'm not huge into jazz. Like Concord Records is jazz. I'm not really huge into jazz. It's not, it's never been my game, but you know, sure. I mean, you know, I'll give anything a listen. You're right. I want my nanobots to tune into AM radio stations. Uh, no, himself. I actually pulled out the in, uh, International Encyclopedia of uh, of Political Science and went the big book on it. And we read the we read the heading to the section on fascism, and then we read about the fascist ideology. We skipped a bunch of the history section, um, but yeah, we went through like the big book. And I mean, we, like I said, th this is this is the International Encyclopedia of Political Science is to political science as Black's Law is to law. It is, if you don't have this text in your library and you're going to talk about political science, if you're going to talk about politics, then you're not serious about it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the foundational set. It's one of those things. Um, and as I always like to freak people out, it's also $1,400. It's $400 if you want to rent it on uh, Kindle. Yeah. It's, like I said, have you ever tried to buy Black's Law? It's not cheap. It's one of those texts. Oh, uh, somebody asked. Yeah, Aspen, they, they, Johnson and Johnson put my mom through the ringer. So they, they are permanently. Um, they're on my list. I opened, I owned the Chicago style guy, but never opened it. Um, it has nothing to do with Telk. Yeah. Um, yeah, it has nothing to do with Telk. Nice, Viva. 
I respect it. I, I mad mad fucking props there, Viva. I I, I appreciate that. Cause yeah, I, I let's just say I'm not a fan. Them and Medtronic. Um Oh, we got a bunch of non Americans here. You'll love this. Hold on. This is a bill from an Atlanta, Georgia area hospital. A woman walked into the emergency room, did not get seen for over seven hours, and walked out, and they sent her to collections for nearly $700. Walking in the ER gets a nearly $700 facilities fee. And thus, she was indebted to them for nearly $700 just for walking in the door. Yes, for waiting for an over seven hours. Yes. Are, are the U.S. okay? No, Fertus, we're not. Send help. <laughs> but don't, because they'll get shot in the street. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd fucking Aspen. I would have done that for you myself. There's a whole bunch of shit that, like, yeah. All right, Caboose, take care of yourself. <laughs> God punk, enjoy your Pop-Tarts. Send the UN. Oh, we'd fucking, those good old boys would shoot them in the streets. It would be a fucking, it would be, I, oof. There'd be problems. There'd be problems. You spelled wealth care wrong. And with that, I'm going to go make some food because I'm hungry and that makes my neuropathy worse and my legs are burning and my hands are burning. And quite frankly, I'm sick of seeing some weird ass opinions I've been seeing in chat um, for all night. So yeah, we're going to raid over to Radhom who's like, like Carney trash. He's okay with me calling him that. He knows I love him. I love, I love Carney trash. I love him. He's circus performer and his, his mustache is the most epic mustache. I love his mustache. He paints miniatures. He does fucking some D&D &D sometimes. He does some politics. Right now, he's in politics. So he's going to be doing that probably. But I don't know what he'll be doing at this moment in that segment. We're going to worry it over to, to Radhom because he's good people. He's coloring his mustache. Nice. During Movember. Um, everybody else, Wednesday. It's Wednesday. So it's a 5.30 p.m. show. So some of you I won't see because you're in different time zones. Some of them, might, some of you I might see. Either way, I will catch you all later. Let's go, hi, uh, go say hi to uh, the real rad hominid. Either way, quite welcome. And I'll, ca <laughs> I'll catch you all later.